It's Nevada, Las Vegas, and Fullerton last week, 21-17. Here's the kickoff, and we're ready to play. It is through the end zone. It will be Utah State football at the 20-yard line. And racing out at quarterback will be Brent Snyder. He's 6'4", goes 214 pounds. He's the junior college transfer, and he has completed 17 touchdown passes this year. You see the numbers, and they are outstanding. For only the second time in Aggie history, a quarterback has thrown for more than 1,000 yards in three games. And he has done that in his last three. 323 against New Mexico State, 384 against San Jose State, and 360 against Utah. They'll go with a long step back, and immediately Snyder calls timeout. He did not like the Fresno State defensive front. He's a very intelligent quarterback. He'll audibleize at the line of scrimmage some 45, maybe 50% of the time. And obviously, he was shaken up by what he saw on the opposite side of the ball. So he, he utilizes an early timeout. Well, this may give us a chance to take a look at what offense that he will be working with. Brett Payne and Tim Ray will be the running backs, and Payne is the young man we were talking about. They go with two transfer running backs. Tim Ray is out of Drake, and Payne we told you about from the Air Force Academy. Ray's been more of the blocker and Payne's been more of the running back, but the running back situation has not produced a lot of yards for Chuck Shelton's team. They've been basically a pass-oriented squad. And Fresno State with three down linemen with three linebackers right up along the line as well. And there's a run straight at the middle of nothing there and a short gain for Tim Ray. It is a gain of two. It will be second down and eight. Ray is a six foot, 216 pound junior from Alva, Oklahoma. And Payne is their main man. He has rushed for 313 yards. Kendall Smith and Pat Newman are outstanding receivers. And then the offensive line. Jerry Brown and Sid Roberts are the best along that front line. Ray and Payne are the split backs. Snyder wants to throw. He has time. It is incomplete at the 32-yard line. It was intended for Troy Turner. Tremendous inside rush on the blitz from Tracy Rogers. Junior linebacker forced the hand of Brent Snyder. That offensive line, the best one is the left guard, Jerry Brown. His father played for the Kansas City Chiefs. to go. Three wide receivers, two to the right side. O'Leary faked the blitz, now drops off Snyder with time. The pass is incomplete at the 35-yard line as Kendall Smith slipped and fell down. The coverage was supplied by free safety Tony Harris. Pressure coming from the nose tackle John Turner, who's starting today from Bullard High School in Fresno. He really applied pressure. That was a nice effort by the Bulldog defense. Three and out, and they forced this team to punt. Anthony Williams, number three, he's averaging about five and a half yards return. And the punter is Louis Aguiar. He's from Livermore in California. Williams from the 33. He's out of bounds at the 41-yard line in Fresno State. They'll start their offense in fine field position. A 45-yard punt by Aguiar. Fresno State offense lines up with Dave Telford at quarterback. He's thrown for 1,153 yards in his last three games, an average of 384 per game. Worked on his release. He's got a much quicker release than from earlier in the season. Brian Fallon is the center, and they'll go with the I formation with Collins, the fullback, and Kelly Skipper. And immediately they go with the flea flicker, and Telford falls down, and he will be second down and long. Give credit to Tony Brown in the deep secondary working against Ron Jenkins. There was nowhere to go for Telford, so he smartly took the loss. The Joining Telford will be Kelly Skipper and Dean Collins coming up outstanding games. And Smith and Jenkins had 100-yard games last week with a Kampalik, Fallen, Langham, and Truchelle along the offensive line. 
Goodicum again has that bad back. From the shotgun, it is second down and 18. It is complete and out of bounds at the 47-yard line, Brock Smith. Great job by Brock Smith rerouting himself to help the quarterback, Telford, who was in trouble. And Telford showed great poise in the pocket, waiting for Smith to make his cut. Third down and seven. A look at the defensive front, Holsey, McCandless, Hunsaker, and Hunsaker, and yes, they are brothers. The linebackers, Hanson, Miller, and Bauman. Third down and seven yards to go. And Telford has the first down to Brock Smith. His second catch of the game. And the flag will follow. And Smith is coming off a career high six catch, 121 yard performance last week against Fullerton. Andre White will be ticketed for a face mask as he was there late. Telford locked into a single receiver on the far side. Smith, Smith got open. And watch 45 with the left hand there. Boom. There's your penalty. Just a five-yard walk-off. Tony Brown, Andre White, Justin Olsen, and Darren Long are in the secondary. Out of the eye formation. Kelly Skipper. Big hole. He's to the 30-yard line. A gain of nearly eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Great block from Brent Pollock up front. That guard clearing traffic. And you love to be in a situation when you're second down and short. The quarterback's delight here. Great field position. They're down to the Aggie 30-yard line. So there's a lot of things that the Bulldogs can use in the repertoire right here. Makes it a little easier for Dave Telford. This is second down. This time it's Dean Collins. Sprints to the outside, has the first down to the 24-yard line before he is finally hauled down by the outside linebacker, Tom Hansen. Talking about Mike Withicum, he's the man that laid out the block that turned the corner for Dean Collins. And hasn't Dean Collins arrived the last two weeks against the Nevada, Las Vegas, and Cal State Fort running like a man possessed? He had a career high 91 yards on just 11 carries and a 22 yard sprint around the left end for a touchdown last week. It's first down for Fresno State. And Telford to throw again. The catch is made. And Craig Jones has another first down at the 11 yard line. Tell you that young man just gets better and better. His older brother plays for the San Francisco 49ers. Quick look in. Jones is a kind of target you like to go to on a cold day. He's got great hands and he's reliable when the ball's near. So why not pick out a target like that young man? He's only a junior, so he'll be back next year for the Bulldogs. Good call, Randy. I think you're right. He is a guy who likes to play in this kind of weather. And Telford drops the football, regains it himself, and falls on it near the 13-yard line. It will be second down. They will need 12. Right there with the Hunsaker brothers, Brian Hunsaker, who goes 6'6", 250, and his younger brother, Jeff Hunsaker, is 6'5", 248. This is the exchange from Folland and Telford, and on a cold day, and it's in the low 40s, could be in the 30s before the afternoon is done. We may see that quite a bit. They'll only say it's a loss of one. Second down, 11. Well, a long 11. Split the backs. Helper to throw. He's he fumbles the football. And it's recovered by Utah State. Darren Long on a blitz from the safety spot. And you're going to see a ferocious hit. Gary Holsey also there around the ball. But watch 27. Telford never saw him. Dave was looking to the left, trying to lock in again on one receiver. Watch, he'll never look back to this direction. And Long has honed in on him, and then it's all over. That territory you do not have much time to work with. First and ten for Brent Snyder and the Aggies. Out of the eye formation, they will go without the tight end. Payne, right side, gain of five. And you know, Randy, this is something that Jim Sweeney was talking to us about yesterday when we were visiting. He said Dave Telford has...
has to learn to get that ball in the end zone. He moves it very well between the 20s, but when you get inside the 20, we need the six points. And he looked just to one side. You noticed he never looked for any alternatives. He was locked into one receiver. Second down five. Wilburn will pick up Ron Wade, who is in motion. And a flag will go down. Can't send two in motion. That's nope. an automatic penalty. <laughs> I think every single referee saw that one. The side judge, the back judge, the referee all throwing their flags. They said it was too much time rather than the motion. I think they went with the too much time first. So Wade will leave the game. Then on now, Pat Newman and Kendall Smith. They have outstanding receivers. Kendall Smith, number nine, had 10 catches a week ago at New Mexico State. Has 52 catches this year and runs 4 5 40. He's dangerous. There's a timeout on the field with 9 minutes 43 seconds to work with in the first quarter. We have a scoreless football game. We're live at Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah. This is the 14th meeting in a series that Utah State leads by a 7-6 margin. Fresno State has only won once here, and that was in 1985. Kevin Sweeney was quarterback. Brent Snyder, quick pass, incomplete. He had his tight end wide open, and Petey Maiden could not hang on. Well, Petey's the fastest tight end of the PCAA. But he's been inconsistent. Nick Jacobs is down at the sideline. Okay, you know, remember that strong safety blitz by the Aggies? Offensive coordinator Rich Olsen was telling Telford, listen, you got to go one, two, three, and throw that thing. And I think Telford will be get rid of it on the next series much quicker. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Vic. It cost them. Telford fumbled the football, and that is why the Aggies have taken over. It is third down and ten. And Snyder, again, good protection. Completes the pass for the first down. 36-yard line. An excellent catch by Kendall Smith. Just chatted about it. That was great concentration because Craig Bowen's number seven is right there defending. You'll see the pocket form for this junior quarterback, Brent Snyder. Plenty of time, and it's a good solid throw. But watch number seven. He was right there. And that's a great catch by Kendall Smith. There he is. And he's uh, a man the Bulldogs are going to have to try to slow down today. One reason they had such good protection, they were really holding Jethro Franklin. No flags this time, though. It's first down, 35-yard line. Snyder will throw again. And here comes Ron Cox. The pass is complete, though, and he's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Jay Wilkerson was there to knock him out. Snyder did a very good job, as you see Payne. Snyder did a good job going to a safety valve, which was Brett Payne there, because Cox was applying so much pressure. He started at the Air Force Academy, Brett Payne. Part of the Falcons' 11-1 team that won the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And a man injured on the field. It's Todd Storm. And the reason he's playing is due to an injury to John Lesher. So the right side of that offensive line is getting uh, banged up a bit for Utah State. And we will pause with 9.04 remaining in the first quarter, a scoreless game. There's Jim Sweeney. He is big into imagery. And he says imagery is important for the seniors because they have to show the younger players that this football team can win on the road, something they have not done this year. Utah State with a first down. The Bulldogs have lost at Washington State this year, at UCLA, and at Pacific. They have two final road games here at Utah State and next week against New Mexico State. Beautiful protection and throw to Pat Newman. Newman's caught touchdown passes in his last seven consecutive games. The NCAA record is eight, and Henry Ellett is one of the guys who caught eight touchdown games in a row. Michael Irvin, who's now playing for Miami, is one of the four others. Eller, that was a great year. He had 15 touchdown receptions for Fresno State. Newman way over his head. The coverage was supplied by Craig Bowens. 
It'll be second down, 10 yards to go from the Fresno State 48-yard line. He's a tough guy. You were talking about the 43 hits he took against Nebraska and got right back up the next week. Well, that's what he impressed his head coach, Chuck Shelton, said, hey, not only did he get up, he was impressive. He was moving the football team against Nebraska. He's going to be my quarterback. He scored 12 points in a 56-12 loss at Lincoln. He was impressive. The defense wasn't. You know Nebraska, they're not going to play any home and home with Utah State. And they should. Snyder is broken up. No flag. As the coverage was supplied by Rod Webster. Defense did not bite on the play action, and that's why that was such an impressive stand by the defenders there for Fresno State. And Jim Sweeney has to be very pleased with the way the defense has played to this point. Well, he was really firing the kids up this morning. They got to learn he, to win on the road. That's what he's all about. Had Scott Johnson getting them fired up. He had Scott Johnson, the sports information director, in a three-point stance. <laughs> it's third and ten. Snyder has a man open. It's Payne down the sideline. He's knocked down at the 20-yard line. First down, Utah State. Big third down conversion. And Brent Snyder looking around, surveying, and finds his third target out of the secondary. And in the secondary, out of the backfield is Brent Payne. And obviously, as a running back, once he catches it, he knows what to do with it. That's a big gate, and Utah State is driving now. And Payne was open, and Snyder found him as a secondary receiver. First and 10, 21-yard line. They switch to the eye, and we've got motion everywhere. Tim Ray was guilty of moving. The left tackle, Rich Nitzius, was guilty of moving. First down, 15. They anticipated about 10,000 Utah State Aggie fans here today, and you can see it's spotted with a little red. That means Fresno State is here as well. Clouds in the background, and that is snow in those clouds. They've been saying all week long we would have a cold Saturday afternoon and snow flurries. First and 15. made 12-yard line a gain of 14 it will be second down and one and Pat Newman is really working over Keith McCoy right now and Tim Ray really applied a great block to Ron Cox coming in from the right and gave Snyder all day to throw boom Cox is down time to throw pattern is run quick out McCoy's there late Big gain again for the Aggies, who are really on an extended drive. This is not a good running team, but they have second down, and they just need one yard. Snyder to throw. In the end zone, it's incomplete. Third down one, intended for wide receiver Troy Turner. Sheldon, somewhat animated, second year. He feels that Fresno State has the better talent, but on our home field, he says, anything can happen. He says it better be a high-scoring team because if it's low-scoring, Fresno State will win. Third down and one. Payne fumbles the football. Fresno State has it. Rod Webster. Number 80, John O'Leary, the linebacker, as you see the Webster recovery, and each team now has lost it, putting it on the ground. But O'Leary filled the gap and really had a crushing hit. Watch number 80 greet the ball carrier. As Payne is at the line of scrimmage, he gets the shoulder tackle in, and now the ball comes free. That's a big play, and it denies the Aggies from drawing first blood. Fresno State had taken the football down to the Aggie 10-yard in line and fumbled, and now it is Utah State's turn. Telford to Skipper to the 20-yard line. Jeff Hunsaker on the tackle. 
and there's Rod Webster. And a lot of people have been saying, how do you replace a great player like Rod Webster, who's one of the finest safeties in Fresno State history? Well, Jim Sweeney says they have a young man named Jeff Peterson, who has just been brilliant of late. And he is the man of the future, a former baseball player. He's played, as a matter of fact, for the Cincinnati Reds organization. First down, Fresno State. Out of bounds near the 40-yard line. If Kelly Skipper catches the low screen, goes up to about the 42-yard line, Donald Miller. Kelly Skipper is built low to the ground in these kind of conditions where it's tough to tackle. He's very slippery. Tough to get a shot on a player like that. Got another great block out of the flat from that big tackle, Mike Withicum, who was clearing traffic. And he will be Vic Jacobs' feature at halftime. Big Mike Withicum, 6'6", 290 pounds. Telford with a first down from the 42-yard line. It's incomplete. In the arms of Brock Smith. Now normally, Second Steve, down. you say that's a ball that should have been caught. But when it's 40 degrees, it's very difficult to make the easy catch. And I'm very Jim Sweeney shakes his hand and he's a little bit disappointed. But it is not easy to make the catch here. That was the first incompletion for Dave Telford. He's now three of four. Well, six of seven, excuse me, for 65 yards. The first incompletion. intercepted off on the sideline Andre White had it go through his hands good and coverage third down and ten simple man for man and uh, pressure on Telford they had to unload you got to keep warm in these elements Ooh, it's bitter cold out there third down Bulldogs need ten Collins, the lone setback. Williams is in the game. He's off to the left. And now it's Jenkins in motion. Telford under pressure. The pass is thrown. The catch is made by Craig Jones. Fabulous effort by Jones. Beat the linebacker, Kevin Bauman, number 48. Telford throw this ball low but it's a very catchable pass and Jones goes low to the ground to get it it's a nice effort and he ran a route that was far enough to get him the first down just barely got it by a yard again no tight end Telford went to the shotgun now comes up to the line of scrimmage quick pass to the sideline Brock Smith with his third catch of the day It'll be second down, gain of about four or five yards. He has 36 catches now. He had a touchdown last week in that victory over Fullerton. Telford backed off the line of scrimmage there. He noticed that the right quarterback, Greg Haynes, had moved up to the line of scrimmage, so he wanted to get a better view. He may have checked off on that play. He's got Jones back in there, but he's split out wide in the slot on the right side. Play action, roll out right. Jones, what a catch at the 23. They say he juggled the football, and I'd like to see that one again because it looked like he completely held on to it. Well, we're going to look at it again. A nice play fake to Kelly Skipper right there. Telford with a half roll to his right. He's bobbling. Ooh, that looked like a good catch, but it might have hit the ground. So perhaps with the official right there, might have been a good call. So to, 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 that's one of those, it could go either way calls. It's third down and six. Skipper goes out wide. One lone setback is Dean Collins. And another fumble on the play. The whistle's blew, and now a flag goes down. So it'll be third down and 11. Miscommunications here. You notice the right side of the offensive line. 
Telford's head was still up, and the ball was snapped by Fallon. Fortunately for the Bulldogs, the play was blown dead. Those three young men are uh, the answer to the question, what is an Aggie? Those are Aggies. And they're rooting for the team in silver and blue today. Fresno State with the football and with an important third down 11 situation. Collins will go out to receive. Telford wants to go deep. It's incomplete at the 30 yard line. And again, Fresno State moves the football but comes up empty. Dave Telford has to be disappointed. Steve, you just hit the, the nail on the head. He's been moving the football team. But we're uh, 10 minutes into the game. Two extended drives, no points. Time for Barry Belli. Coming off his best performance of the year, 46 and a half yard average against Fullerton State and nailed several inside the 20, including one out of bounds at the one. He will angle this one, but it will go out of the end zone. That is courtesy of the mountains. Thin air, boy, that ball carries. And Eric Bouchel, along with Dave Telford on the sideline. Jim Sweeney saying that if Telford can not get that ball in the end zone, we will see Eric Rochelle, despite the fact that Telford has thrown for 1,153 yards in the last three games. Snyder over 1,000 yards passing in the last three games as well. Only the second player in Utah State history to do that. And there have been some fine quarterbacks. Pain, nothing there. They have no running game. Last week against a very young New Mexico State defense, 28 carries for only 64 yards. John Turner did a great job there of getting rid of the block of David Walker, just upending the, the ball carrier. Turner's already been on three plays. Uh, he's fired up his first start. McCutcheon's been banged up, so Turner's in, played in that three-man front. Turner, a local guy from Fresno. Under pressure. Maiden. He's to the 50-yard line and finally hauled down from behind by Holloway. Thirty-eight yards on the play to Petey Maiden. I believe this ball was tipped. The blitz was coming. And Snyder had to roll for his life. Watch Wilkerson right there. I believe he ticked it. But it was a great throw to Petty Maiden. We talked about his speed, and he beat the linebackers for that big 38-yard effort. Well, anytime you have a tight end on a linebacker, and Holloway was that man, you have nice one-on-one -on -one passing situation. Snyder answered at that time. Pain up the middle, short game by the 40-yard line, down near the 39-38, and a flag will follow. Vic Jacobs is down on the sideline. Thank you, Stephen Randy. You know, series before, Mike Waffles, defensive line coach of the Dogs, was telling John Turner and Jethro Franklin, listen, all they're going to do is pass, so tee off, go in there. John Turner said, though, that they know his moves into the line, so watch for some stunts along the defensive line this series. Stephen Randy. We almost saw Wilkerson get to Snyder, but he read the blitz beautifully, completed the 38-yard pass to Petey Maiden. Smith and Newman will go left and right. Payne and Ray are the backs. Snyder falls down, 42-yard line. We had rain all day yesterday. And a little ice in the evening, too, and that's a slippery field. And for Brent Snyder, he lost his footing into the college game as soon as you go down play is over. Obviously, in the pro game, he would have been able to get up and throw again. Snyder passed Eric Hipple for third place on single-season Aggie yardage. He has those 2,282. He's right behind Bob Galliano and Tony Adams. He will throw again. It's intercepted at the 30-yard line. 
Yes. Craig Bowen. That's his second of the year. Bowen in the right place at the right time. Now Snyder has time. And that's just great coverage by Bowen who slipped in front of the target. It really was, and he is playing more and more. Athletic ability on that play. Here's the eye formation. Kelly Skipper. 36 yard line. You know, Steve, everybody here expected this high-scoring football game, and it still may turn out to be that way. But wouldn't you know it, we played most of the first quarter, and neither team's on the board yet. Second and three. <laughs> Isn't that the way it always goes? It always turns that way. But again, uh, we saw it uh, last week in the Cal State Fortin game. Very explosive three, four-minute period, and that's always possible. Matter of fact, Fresno State scored all of their points in the final three and a half minutes of this first half last week against Bulletin State. Wide open at the 37-yard line. Andre Alexander, he's got great speed. You know, earlier in the year, he had trouble catching the football, but he has progressed. He's a JC transfer. I think next year to senior year, he'll be a terrific player. Kelford with a good spiral here, a tight spiral, and Alexander got wide open, and had he not slipped, it would have been one-on-one -on -one with Darren Long and may have had a touchdown. And Andre's limping just a bit. He'll stay in the game, go wide left. And you see that number five feet, eight inches tall? No way. He's five feet six. Play action pass rolling right is Kelford. Complete through the hands of Anthony Williams near the 20-yard line, second and 10. You know, the Utah State scheme, they're playing man-for-man -man coverage in that secondary, and I just don't believe they can keep up with Andre Alexander. I'm not sure they can keep up over the long haul with Ron Jenkins and Brock Smith, but Andre Alexander is a legitimate 4.440 man, and it's almost uh, asking too much of that secondary. And when the field is wet like it is, the receiver knows where he's going, which is a disadvantage to any defensive player who's going to play man for man. And it's easier to be the blocker in the offense rather than the rusher on defense. Again, the play action. Dean Collins, they set the screen up. He's to the 30. He is nailed at the 24, but not before he gets the first down. That was set up nicely. Out front of Collins was 75, Ray Langham. Doing a good job blocking and also number 70, Skidmore. They got out in front of that play. That made it possible to have a successful screen effort. Tight end Jones will fill the slot on the left side. First and ten. Incomplete, intended for Brock Smith. The secondary of Brown, Long, Clark, and Haynes is doing the job right now. We have a scoreless football game in the first quarter with two minutes and 25 seconds to play with. Collins and Skipper remain in back of that man, Dave Telford. It's complete. Near a first down. Ron Jenkins, his first catch of the game and his 60th of the season. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Tony Brown, and I've been talking about it in recent moments. I'm just not sure, as this is a first down pitch to Jenkins, that that secondary can be asked to go one-on-one -on -one with these receivers. And they are moving the football, and it's only a matter of time before they'll score. First and 10 at the 13. Kelly Skipper to the 10. Near the 9-yard line. by Hunsaker and Hunsaker again, number 99 and 86. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> it sure does. And they've been that way. They've been laying down the law for Utah State football these last couple of seasons. They're the grandsons of the first Utah State All-American ever, Elmer Bear Ward. You're doing your research. There's the reserve, and they fumble the football. And 
for the second time in this game, Fresno State has been inside the 15, and for the second straight time, they have fumbled the ball away. It's tough to execute trick plays on a very cold day. And Rich Olsen, the, reverse. the offensive coordinator, conferring with head coach Jim Sweeney. Rule of thumb, you want to play basic football in this kind of cold weather, and running a reverse like that is... Uh, Typical thing to execute. 74 got in there for the recovery. Jerry Halter. Mistakes. Two times they have happened for Fresno State's offense. And now it is the defense's challenge. And someone moves. Jerry Brown. That should back up Utah State five yards. Keep in mind, the Aggies coughed it up once, too, so all three drives that we've seen this afternoon have turned into turnovers. And again, I think that's a direct result of all fumbles of the cold weather. This is the first cold day that Utah State has had to play in as well as Fresno State. First and 15 for the first down. Utah State needs to move that ball near the 30-yard line. is almost picked off at of the 26-yard line. Snyder really under pressure. A delivery sack from Jethro Franklin. Snyder should have taken the sack. He's lucky to get the ball back. McCoy nearly had the interception. But Franklin was draped all around Brent Snyder. And what a game that Franklin had last with 16 tackles, 13 solo. A sack to go with that recovery he caused another fumble and he was the PCAA defensive player of the week on the offensive side it was Guy Liggins of San Jose State who had a two touchdown performance and a brilliant San Jose State victory incomplete 35 yard line Snyder not even near his target that time and again the pressure this time supplied by a blitzing John O'Leary Pressure from the middle, too, from Chuck McCutcheon, who was coming from that nose guard position, did a good job of dominating Sid Roberts, who's been a very good center here at Utah State. Sid Roberts is a little guy by today's standards of 247 pounds, but he's the strongest guy on that offensive front for Utah State. Third down, 15. The blitz is on. Everybody's coming. O'Leary. They track him. At the one-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Three linebackers came. Holloway, O'Leary, Wilkerson. And Nick Ruggiroli is the man they're giving the sack to. But look at this. Simple game of numbers. And O'Leary was the one coming through the middle at 77 from the outside is Ruggiroli. Only a freshman. He's going to be a great one. So Aguiar is backed up to the wall. Williams standing at the 40. Gets the punt off, and it is an excellent one. But Williams will have a return. And the wall is set up to the right side. And he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So Aguiar does his job with a 53-yard punt. Nick Ruggiero, what a great effort there. You know, he's listed at about 225 pounds and still growing. I look for him to put out another 30, 35 pounds by the time he's a junior or senior and really be a tough guy for the Bulldogs. He started the year only 6'1". He has grown an inch to 6'2". And they expect him to be, like you said, about 250. Catch is made by Brock Smith. Near a first down, I believe he has it. Yes, it's an 11-yard gain, first and 10 for Fresno State. Just a matter of time. These receivers are getting open on almost every play now. Utah State's going to have to start blitzing or doing something to try to shake up Telford. Coach, still going after, all right? Make sure you give him a chance. Okay, good dress. That's great, Jeff. That's working. Okay, now, if it's not working, I'll send one of these. Brock Smith with the catch. Slips and falls at the 16-yard line. We have a flag down back up field. It was after the catch. But it was near the line of scrimmage, which could be a hold. Yep. 
the foot will come back. Well, as Culper slipped, but he was able to stand erect finally and get a good throw to Brock Smith, but this one's coming back because of the hole. That's an eligible receiver downfield rather than the hole. You know, as dominating as you can be at a football game, if you make mistakes, forget the dominance, you'll leave a football team in a position to beat you. And so far, Fresno State is making way too many errors. They've been inside the 15 twice. They've fumbled both times. Utah State has recovered both times. Screen to Kelly Skipper. Not much there. Down he goes. No gain. Third and 15. And this is a defense that is dead last in the PCAA. Vic Jacobs is down on the sideline. Okay, Brock Smith has just received a, an injury, a minor injury, but he took himself out of the game. Behind his right knee, he got hit, so uh, he's trying to work it out. He should be back, but he is uh, working out on the sideline. It's a minor injury. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Vic. Also notice Jeff Skidmore lift off. One of the tackles on offense for the Bulldogs. So it's Alexander and Jenkins in the game and Telford back to throw. He is in trouble. He's going to have to scramble. Let's it go. First down. Kelly Skipper out of bounds. 15 yard line. And that is the final play of the first half with the Bulldog fans watching here in Logan, Utah. We have a scoreless game at the end of one period. End of one quarter of play. At the flanker position, Brock. A few plays. Perhaps we can also get a report from Vic on Jeff Skidmore, who also went on. Fresno State has themselves a first down here as we change periods. A scoreless game back with the second quarter after these words. At the Aggie 17 yard line, first and 10. Dean Collins tries the right side. He is inside the 15 to the 13. For he's wrapped up by Donald Miller. Dean Collins. Good play call there, I think. You, you pass, you pass, you want to set up the run, and you get five yards on first down. Good block up front, too, from Ray Langham. Well, this is the third time that Fresno State has been down here. They have a second and five. The last two times, they fumbled the ball away. They throw the pass to Kelly Skipper. He makes the catch. He's near a first down. He has it. First and goal for Fresno State. Again, it is a scoreless ball game. Three times, Fresno State has been down here. But they've twice come up empty. Skipper wide open in the flat. These are his elements, I think. Like I said earlier, he's built low to the ground. Reliable hands has become a much better receiver out of the backfield. And so far, he's been Telford's favorite target along with Brock Smith. Collins, not much there. Maybe a yard. Mark Eggington on the tackle. This is where it gets very tough to score because the defense has an opportunity to uh, close in. Let's go down to Vic Jacobs for an injury report. Talk about Jeff Skidmore. It's a thigh. He got hit in the thigh. Uh, he was testing, and I think he'll be back also in the next series. Back to you guys. Second and goal from the five. Incomplete at the goal line. Craig Jones was open, but Telford delivered it a little too late. As soon as Telford was looking over the middle, Jones had made his move to his right side, Randy, and the safety had slipped and fallen. And as soon as Telford found him, the safety had regained his composure and uh, somehow found Craig Jones as well. Perplexing for Jim Sweeney as quarterbacks having a big day with no points yet. And it is third and goal from the five. 
Pass again on the rollout. Touchdown, Dean Collins. Craig Jones ran a route to clear out the area, and Collins came out of the backfield, and now the coach is a happy man. Watch 87 if you can. And he will clear the area for 33, Collins. Telford buys time with the roll. Watch behind him. Watch. Actually, they're both there. Could have been a touchdown for either man. Might have been a, a cross-up in that route. The Bulldogs will take the points. So here in the second quarter, we finally have our first score. And Barry Belli will try and add the point after. He does. And it makes it a 7-0 Fresno State lead with 13-17 to play before halftime. the 7-0 lead. They are in search of their first road victory of 1987. Again, losing at Washington State, UCLA, and Pacific, and the last time they lost all the road games was 1976. Jim Sweeney's Bulldogs finished the year 5-6. and six. Falling on the football at the 18-yard line is Pat Newman. And felt that that ball was going to go out of bounds. So did Pat Newman. That's why he fell on the ball. Uh, he was concerned that uh, it wouldn't go out of bounds for a moment and uh, could be recovered by the Bulldogs. See how Snyder responds now that Fresno State got it in the end zone on a touchdown pass Telford to Collins. Set up by the sack by John O'Leary and Nick Ruggiroli where Utah State had to punt the ball from their own one. Williams ran it back to the 44 and hits the drive. Fresno State. Ron Cox. And Ron Cox got on that backfield in a hurry. And Jim Swin is very happy about that. 54 with a big league play. He's as good as they get as a freshman, and he has some future ahead of him. Almost looked like a cross-up. The line was there. 75 on that offensive front. David Walker ran into the quarterback, and... Uh, Snyder never had control of the ball. Uh, this is something that Utah State simply could not afford. Jenkins with the catch at the five-yard line. He has 51 catches now. Rule of 61, excuse me, I'm sorry. Rule of thumb right after a turnover. Try to hit immediately. Telford went right up top. Two big ones for Fresno State. Three turnovers for Utah State now as Skipper tries to get to the outside. Will not be able to do it as he's called down near the seven-yard line. Utah State has been intercepted once. They have fumbled twice. With 12 minutes and 34 seconds before halftime, 7-0 our score. It is third down and three. Interesting play call here. He's had success with the tight end. Obviously, with those numbers, he's had success everywhere. But maybe Craig Jones, 87, might be his target. Again, the rollout right side. Intercepted in the end zone. It will be brought out. The third turnover for Fresno State. And all three times it has been inside the 15-yard line. Well, Darren Long was thinking like we were, that it might go to the tight end, Craig Jones. And that's exactly where the ball was. I think he really wanted to go to 33 Collins, but he was covered. So he looked back to the middle of the field to Jones, and that's just a great play by Long. He can't pick up any blocking. Pollock knocked him off his pins. Look at him go up the ladder to get that. Darren Long, that's a big play for Utah State. They got only 7 nothing rather than 14 nothing. Snyder has the first down to Kendall Smith at the 29-yard line. Well, Jim Sweeney has to be pacing the sideline going, hey, we could be up 28 nothing. Chuck Shelton says, hey, that's a nice combination. He wants to see the ball in Kendall Smith's hands. He loves number nine. 
Craig Bowens leaves the lineup. Tony Harris back on. Newman is off the right side. He's picked up by Keith McCoy. Smith is being anchored by Fred Wilburn. That's the halfback, Demetrius Brown, and he will get nothing. When Utah State runs out of the eye, it's usually a, a sure-fire to run for one of their tailbacks off tackle or a quick hitter. And that one did not fool the Bulldogs' defense. Whenever they see him go into the eye, you saw Ron Webster immediately read a run, and he was up there on the line of scrimmage to make the hit. It's interesting how an offensive line can be so strong protecting the passer, but so very weak trying to push ahead with the run. That's the Utah State story this year. Dead last in the PCAA in the run. Snyder in trouble. The pass is thrown. It's completed the 35-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down and five as the catch was made by Kendall Smith. Jethro Franklin all but killed the quarterback, Snyder. 67 really drills Brent Snyder. And only his great strength makes him able to deliver the ball. You see him going down. I don't think he ever saw that one caught by Smith. Jethro Franklin really delivered the mail to Brent Schneider's chest. Again, Franklin is there, and this time the catch is made by Pat Newman near the 44-yard line, and it's a first down. Third catch of the game for Newman, who has great hands and has made some spectacular catches in Logan this year. But they are really applying the heat to Snyder. We talked about the 43 hits he took at Lincoln against Nebraska. He's been hit a lot here today, too. Last two plays by number 67, all PC double A Jethro Franklin. 44 yard line, first down. Demetrius Brown with a big hole. He skips outside to the 43-yard line and fumbles it out of bounds. It's a first down, a gain of 13 yards. When Utah State's in that I formation, they're going to run the football. Demetrius Brown gets hit there by Webster in the secondary. But uh, that's the best run play of the game so far for the Aggies. Dede made and tight end left. They split the backs a little bit more as Brown is back in the game. Snyder completes the pass to Demetrius Brown, and he is nailed. They'll give him the catch up to the 36-yard line. It's a gain of five. Jay Wilkerson really popped him as soon as he caught the football. Newman and Turner come back on. But what do you have for us about Jethro Franklin? Well, the defensive adjustments they've made is they've now isolated Jethro Franklin on the guard. The guard cannot handle Jethro one-on-one. -on -one. Back to Glesner Booth. Well, he is lined up off the left side of that guard now. And Snyder will throw. And the catch is made. And a flag is down. And I believe it may have been holding. And they were holding Jethro Franklin. Well, number 67 is a one-man wrecking crew. You see 67. 75, David Walker. Sure, you look at the glove. He's holding him right there. There's the flag. Well, you can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe try some tricks, but you can't do those tricks right in front of the official. That happens when you're the best, and Franklin, who is also the captain of this defense this afternoon, is conferring with the officials. How would you like to be David Walker? He's a walk-on. <laughs> He's a walk-on here in Logan, and he looks up, and he's faced with 6'2", 260 pounds of true power. Guy who has 30 sacks in the last 20 games. Nah, I don't think I'd like that. Snyder has completed his last four passes and now needs 15 yards to make up. Here comes Franklin again. He lost the football deep. And 
and it is broken up at the 20 yard line Kendall Smith trying to pull it down with one hand it will be third down and 15 and David Walker is taking a tremendous beating in that offensive line How about Snyder well I'll tell you this Snyder's not going to take Walker out to dinner tonight already 67s by him and is taking dead aim and Kendall Smith made a great play in the secondary, acting as a receiver turned defensive back, or that would have been an interception. Yes, indeed. So Utah State needs to get to the 31-yard line for a first down. Smith to the right. Maiden is in the slot with Turner off to the left as well. And the flag's down, and they're going for the home run, and Smith is wide open. It is a touchdown. But a flag is down a field. And it may have been a hold again. Same thing. He cannot handle Jethro Franklin. And they're going to have to exchange blocking schemes here. I think they're going to either have to double team or get David Walker out of the game. That, <laughs> that cost him a touchdown that time. Well, the cannons are going off, but they didn't talk to the officials. Terrific throw, by the way, by Snyder. He stumbled and he threw an absolute rope 55 yards into the hands of Kendall Smith. They'll bring it back, though. Instead of third and 15, it'll be third down and 25. Now, you really, know, we're sitting there taking... touchdown, it'll be third and 25. You know, we're taking dead aim at David Walker, but there are very few guys who can go one-on-one -on -one with Jethro Franklin. And uh, that's quite a responsibility, and I think they just have to change that. That's unfair to him. And there's the coach who knows that David Walker is getting whipped at that front wall. Well, if they don't do something about number 67, this game is over because he's been an animal in this entire series. And here he comes again. Catch is made by Kendall Smith. Out of bounds. First down. Boy, they needed 25. They get 25 plus three. That's a great quarterback. And they double team Jethro Franklin. David Walker had help from John Leiter, the right tackle. Top of your screen. You notice also Sid Roberts there, 52. Everybody came over. They finally pinned Jethro Franklin, and that's a terrific throw and a great route by uh, that outstanding receiver, Kendall Smith. That's five passes completed in a row by Brent Snyder, so he is heating up. down 12 yard line looking at a very good tight end Petey Maiden has the speed to be a wide receiver he just happens to be a tight end at Logan and he got wide open on the linebacker Tracy Rogers that's another good throw by Snyder who's what he hit six in a row now we have eight minutes and 21 seconds left in the first half, 7-0 Fresno State. It could have been much more. Four times Fresno State has been inside the 20. Three of those times they've come up empty. Demetrius Brown inside the 10-yard line. Demetrius Brown was the leading rusher on the Yankees a year ago, although he had just a bit over 200 yards. I guess the good news is he was the leading rusher. The bad news is it wasn't a lot of yards. But uh, he's a quality back, and he's played behind Brett Payne this year. You know, you're talking about him leading the team with 289 yards rushing. That's the lowest total in Utah State history. 289 yards. Oklahoma comes up with that one back in one game. Snyder Brown stopped at the six-yard line. Tracy Rogers, Jay Wilkerson. It's amazing to me, Steve, that this time... Every time they line up in that I formation, they run right up the middle. And you would think that play action or run wide would work out of the I formation, but they have not run any play action off the I, and I think you'll see that in the second half. Well, the offensive line is beginning to push off, particularly the interior people, Jerry Brown, Sid Roberts, and David Walker. It is third down and five. Plenty of time. Now the pressure. Pass is broken up. Rod Webster in the end zone. Again, the pressure from Jethro Franklin. It's fourth down, and that means kicker Dean Garner comes on, and he is 
one of the PCAA's best. Great coverage by Ron Cox working against Petey Maiden. Also terrific coverage in the secondary by Keith McCoy working against Pat Newman. And it forced Snyder to look for a third target. Here's Robin Hood. He got it. It's a four-point ball game. Seven to three, Fresno State with six minutes, 58 seconds to play in this first half. This first half, Dean Garner, who will kick off here, has 34 field goals after blasting the last 23-yarder. Anthony Williams will take the knee in the end zone, and Fresno State will have it first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Garner with the 34 field goals. Now is within four of breaking the all-time school record set by Steve Steinke, who has 38. Tracy Rogers has got that ice pack on the back of his neck. I don't know if you need ice on a day like today. It's cold enough, isn't it, Tracy? He's a tough kid, though. Uh, I don't think that'll take him out of the lineup. We met him last week, and you see that left arm? He had a big bruise on his left arm, was playing with it for the last two weeks, but he is woof, one tough guy. Telford will throw on first down. Completes the pass out of bounds near the 30. It is a first down. Ron Jenkins. That's three catches for Jenkins. That's 62. And that uh, ties him for third place in the Fresno State charts. 62 by Henry Ellard back in 1982. So he's just two away from passing second place total of Larry Willis's in 1983. Willis has the school record of 79 in 1984. Dean Collins got an eight-yard gain. Second down and two. Good block from the center. Brian followed there as he uh, drove Drew McCandless, the nose guard, right out of there, and Collins just followed for a big game. Imagine Jim Sweeney would like to see a nice, long, sustained drive that gets into the end zone. He's had four drives already in this game. Three, his team has either fumbled away or had intercepted away. Kelly Skipper looking for the first down. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. Andre White on the tackle. cold afternoon they've gone to skipper a very safe pass it's been a productive pass over there andre white really reacted to it second and ten fresno state needs to get to the 49 yard line for the first down look at the time he has completes the pass for an eight yard gain to brock smith Well, that time, the secondary did a fabulous job despite the catch. You, you can't let guys go one-on-one -on -one in the defensive backfield and give a quarterback that much time to throw. And, uh, that was the situation. Telford had uh, time to eat lunch, go to dinner, then take a date out and still make the completion. Those are great numbers, but that front wall is doing a fabulous job. But he had to have her back by 11. Yeah. Oh, they stopped him from getting the first down. Great defensive surge by Utah State. And it was those Hunsaker guys and Gary Halsey. Give number 37, Donald Miller, fine challenge on the surge. 37, Donald Miller had 115 tackles coming into the game, and he attacks right there. Leading tackler on the team, as you can see why. Wow. He was a strong safety in junior college, made to a linebacker in major college and the only reason well they didn't have any linebackers they had to move them belli up in the air kendall smith takes it at the 20 and down he goes at the 27. Thirty-two yards in the punt. We have four twenty-nine before halftime. It's seven to three, Fresno State. You 
Utah State's football, the Aggie fans, 8,281 of them here today in Logan, Utah, watching their Aggies down by four points to Fresno State and the Bulldogs. Brent Snyder will go with one lone setback. It is first and 10 from the 27. And Snyder and the quarterback sneak has a first down. Webster finally corrals him along with Tony Harris at the 44. Brent Snyder has the ability to autobize at the line of scrimmage, and he saw that gap created by that defensive front of the linebackers moving outside the tackles, and Snyder just ran upfield, and there was nobody home. They say he is a tough guy, and he will option the football. He'll go with those quarterback sneaks, and he did this time for a gain of 19. Incomplete at midfield. Second down and ten. Your attention, please, in the third quarter. Texas El Paso 17, Brigham Young 17. Last year, Fresno State won the game 14-7 as Kevin Sweeney broke the all-time passing yardage record, which has since been shattered by San Diego State's Todd Santos. That came last week in nearby Salt Lake City with Brigham Young. of Turner slipping. No reason for a flag, although Chuck Shelton say, hey, I'm at home. I'm supposed to get the calls here. He's animated, and he's hot. He said he leg whipped him. I didn't think so. I think it was just pure out slip. Third down, 10 yards to go, 44-yard line. Snyder has made some big third down conversions in this game. But he still only has three points in the scoreboard. Fresno State with seven. The catch is made. Pat Newman. You talk about the ability to make the great catch. Pat Newman, a sophomore out of San Diego, has that ability. This is a ball that really should be incomplete. And that's just a fabulous grab there in traffic away from McCoy. First down at the 38-yard line. In the I formation, they've run out of this formation most of the time in this game, and they will do it again. Demetrius Brown is hammered at the away to the 42-yard line. Demetrius Brown who's faster than the first string running back, Brett Payne, is running hard here. He's going to break the tackle by Ruggeroli there, by Wilkerson. He broke three or four tackles before he was finally spun down. 3-12 to play in the half. 7-3, Fresno State leads. Facing a second down four situation. He must get to the 27-yard line of Fresno State for... First down, Ron Cox on the blitz. The pass is intercepted. Rod Webster is out of bounds. The second interception by the Bulldogs in the game. The first by Bowens, this by Webster, his third of the year. Sweaty's happy. 25th pass of this first half, and you can see Ron Cox grabbing a leg. Webster had an interception and a touchdown return in the first game of the year against Washington State, so he knows how to run with the football, and that's a big turnover. We're getting late in this first half. The momentum going into the locker room will be crucial, and now there's an opportunity for the Bulldogs to build on that 7-3 advantage. And this is a defense that has been very good this year, but if there is one shortcoming they have had, it is causing turnovers. Today, that's been the big key. Anthony Williams, the pass is incomplete. It would have been a first down. Instead, it's second and 10 from the 37. And Rod Webster, you know he will be all PCAA. <laughs> uh, hello to Fresno. He's a local guy. 
Went to Edison High School. Steve, you know, that was the 26th pass by Telford. We've had 51 throws, and we're not at intermission yet. 7-3. <laughs> Fresno State has the advantage. The catch is made. Jenkins goes down, but has the first down at midfield. Ron Jenkins had a touchdown a year ago against Utah State. I think the Aggie defense is playing with a loaded gun, still with that single coverage in the secondary, and Pelford getting the protection. He's still going to score some points and that before man, this one's out. Ron Jenkins is now tied for Larry Willis for second place for single-season catches at Fresno State. Pelford in trouble. Fumbles the football. Recovered, though, by the Bulldogs. It'll be second down and long. Outside linebacker Tom Hanson, 94, is the man that strips it free right there with the right hand. And now you just got to get on the ball and make sure you retain possession, and that's what the Bulldogs do. Tom Hanson, big number 94, 6'3", 220 pounds. He was a freshman. Now, he was a redshirt last year as a freshman, so he's in his second year, and he learned a lot in that redshirt season. Bulldogs need 16. Look at the time Telford has again, and the pass is dropped at the 37-yard line. Unbelievable protection, and that's why I feel that Utah State is playing with a loaded gun. Those receivers are too good. They're going to get open, and that was just a situation where Telford threw it behind his big tight end. And he had all day long, but, you know, he had nervous feet. And when you have those nervous feet, you don't have the good rhythm, the good weight shift that all quarterbacks like to have, and that's why he missed his man. At least on that occasion, as you see, he's thrown it 28 times. He was surveying the field, not looking for just a primary target. Third and 16. The bomb is intercepted. Travis Clark brought down at the 42-yard line. You talk about reading the quarterback's eyes. Well, Travis Clark, as a safety, has his eyes directly on the quarterback, Telford. And he's right there for the interception on Jenkins. He had that one read beautifully. Andre Alexander's finally going to run him down. Number one puts a pretty good hit on him. You can see that uh, Travis Clark is a little shaken up, but that's a big league play. That's eight turnovers we've had in this game, four by each team. The catch is made barely by midfield. Goes Pat Newman. One minute, 34 seconds left in the first half. Seven to three, our score. We were talking about an offensive show in pregame. It has been a mistake thrown game. Second and three. A fumble. No, just a sack by Franklin again. The Schneider dropped the football, recovered it himself, and then Franklin got him. Jethro's awesome. 67 will be voted into the Logan Hall of Fame after this one. There's a timeout called by Utah State. But watch 67. We'll see if Schneider did indeed fumble it. He beat a double ten. Yes, you're right, Steve. Convenient basketball hop. And Schneider's very happy to get that one back. If you like the aerial game, you are getting your... Your full compliment today. Unbelievable the amount of passes. I would imagine there are a lot of Fresno State fans watching in on KMPH in the Fresno area, though, that are going, oh, gosh. Could have had that one. But four big turnovers in this game. Two interceptions, two fumbles. Utah State, same situation. Yep. Twice they've been inside the 20, and it, they have been denied both times. Well, Vic Jacobs is down on the sideline as we watch Jim Sweeney. I'll tell you, I was right where Telford came off the sideline, comes to head offensive coordinator Rich Olson. Rich says to him softly, he says, Dave, did you see that guy? Telford says, Coach, I never saw where he was. He came out of nowhere. And that was good coaching, I guess, by the Utah State defensive coordinator. They won that battle. Back to you guys in the booth. That was just Travis a great Clark. play by Travis Clark. He read the quarterback all the way. One minute, five seconds before halftime. Kendall 
Smith can't make the catch at the 30-yard line. Pretty good throw. 59 seconds to play. It is fourth down. Well, Brent wants to go for it, but I think they have to punt. They're only four points down. That was a good throw. He put it in a place where Kendall Smith had an opportunity to catch the ball, but just missed. Fresno State setting up for the return. That will be Rod Webster. Aggie off. Ooh, he hits it well. What a kick. Into the end zone. First and 10, Fresno State at the 20-yard line. 55 yards in the punt by Aguiar. His best this year is 59. Isn't it fitting? Aguiar, the, the kick for the Aggies. So he's the guy who was down there before the game putting a big A on the field. Yeah, I think so. There was a big A on the field right at midfield. White A that apparently some fraternity have placed down there on with paper. And because of all the moisture we had yesterday, it was just a mess. Now well, the uh, grounds crew raked that off. And here we are with a pretty good field condition with 51 seconds to play with in the first half. And Dean Collins finding a big hole and finding a first down to the 31 yard line. Well, the first down will immediately stop the clock to move the chains. 45 seconds left in the half. There's some Bulldog supporters here. Yeah, keep warm, guys. They don't have weather like this in Fresno. In search of victory number six and number one on the road. First and 10, 33 seconds left. Telford wants to run it. Again, Collins trying to get outside. Can't do it. Clock will continue to roll. 25 seconds left. Jim Sweeney apparently content to take that 7-3 lead into the locker room where they would have called a timeout right there. We're letting it wind down. We are now inside of 10 seconds left in this first half. Fresno State leading by four points. Telford quickly up to the line. And we'll get the play off, and here he goes. He's looking deep. Nobody out there, and the pass is incomplete at the 18-yard line. That's it for the first half foul plus of college football. Our score is 7-3 Fresno State, and Vic Jacobs wants to talk with head football coach Jim Sweeney. Again, this is halftime. Let's go down to Vic Jacobs. Co Coach, it's the end of the half. Those crazy turnovers. Yeah. Well, if they had uh, goal lines on the 30, the score would be 40 to 40. Neither team can sustain anything. I think we're doing fine. These are strange elements for our kids to be playing. Only Montanans and Utahns should have to play in this type of thing. We're losing our concentration. Some of our kids you know have never seen this type of thing before. We're doing fine. We'll be all right. Okay, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank Appreciate you. it. Okay, we'll have more halftime festivities from Logan, Utah, right after this. And Barry Belli will tow it up from the 35-yard line. And back deep, Brett Payne. Wearing number 40 and Kendall Smith, D2, number nine, at the five yard line. Good underway. 12 yard line. Team by the 20. Finally hauled down near the 27 yard line. Craig Bowens and Fred Wilburn in on the tackle. And there's Brent Snyder. Weary arm from that first half. He threw it 29 times. Snyder now the all-time leader and passes a pass in a single season with Utah State. It was Tony Adams with 340. Adams with 351. Snyder is well past that now. And will throw on first down. And has a man open in Pat Newman, but the pass is overthrown. Second down and 10. They will continue with their same offense with the line of Sid Roberts, David Walker, and Jerry Brown on the interior. John Lesher and Rhett Schnitzius to the tackles. Kendall Smith and Pat Newman are the ends. Snyder will have a backfield of Tim Ray and Brett Payne and the tight end, Petey Maiden. Thirty passes now for Snyder. He has to 
make his read quickly at the line of scrimmage and find out what defense the Bulldogs are in. Straight front this time. And not much there for Demetrius Brown as he's hauled down after only a yard, maybe two games. You know, we talked about the great ability of Jethro Franklin to rush the passer. But on that occasion, he played off a double-team block and made the tackle against Brown on the rush. That was a great effort. And coming into the year, Jethro Franklin didn't want to be one-dimensional. He just didn't want to be noted for his pass rushing ability. He wanted to be able to defend the run. We have a third down and nine. and blitzing so is O'Leary and Snyder unloads and the pass is incomplete at the 40-yard line. Well, Vic Jacobs is down in the field and I think he's with some fans but which fans is he, are you with, Vic? Well, we have the Fresno contingent here in Logan, Utah. A loyal group of about 30 of them. What are you, are you guys keeping warm today? That's yeah, great out here. Dogs, doing great. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the action. And it means punting time for Louis Aguiar. Anthony Williams standing inside the 30-yard line. Will field it at the 23, fumble it, pick it up. He has time. He has an open field. And he's by midfield, and a flag is down. And so is Anthony Williams at the 42. A 50-yard punt, an excellent return, but I believe we have a clip. And yeah, they'll call the clip on number seven, Craig Bowens, and that'll bring it back. That's the third time this year he has had a long run denied. You know, sometimes when you fumble, the defensive onrushers freeze, and that's what happened there. And Williams was able to turn the corner. Let's see if we can pick up number seven. That was the block there you just saw. And it'll bring it back. But uh, the Bulldogs' defense, very impressive in that first series of downs. They dominated the line of scrimmage, and it was three downs and punting time for the Aggies. But this hurts. They only committed three penalties in the first half, and they start out with a costly area here in the second half. Anthony Williams had one return that he had against UCLA for a touchdown, but the referee ruled that he went out of bounds. Later replay showed that he did not. Well, Telford will get the call, not Eric Bushell. He's plagued by two interceptions and two fumbles in the first half. The catch is made by Craig Jones. First down, Fresno State by the 40-yard line to the 42. He was wide open. Telford delivered the ball nicely, too. Jones is having a nice afternoon. Sure-handed tight end. Dave Telford has thrown 32 times, so he's in a real battle with Brent Snyder today, and so far, Telford's winning because he has more points on the board. Dean Collins, who is he hit? Knocked down as he approached the 45-yard line. That linebacker just stuck his nose in there. Tom Hansen made the tackle. Tom Hansen's a promising athlete. Excellent prospect. He's fast. And number 94 is going to fill out before his days are over. I said he's a freshman and he's only a redshirt freshman. He's so talented, they think he could play tight end here at Utah State. But they just need linebackers. They lost three good ones. Al Smith, Wade Harmon, and James Jackson from a year ago. It's second and seven. The pass is caught at the 50-yard line. Two yards shy of the first down, it'll be third and two as Ron Jenkins hauls it in. And there he is, number two in the all-time season charts. That's five catches for Jenkins, and he's moved past Larry Willis, although Willis holds the all-time mark. But Willis, Willis caught 79 one year and 64 another. And now he's in Canada doing his thing at Calgary. And Henry Ellert. We passed tonight already is with the L.A. Rams. Dean Collins trying for the first down. He should have it. Tim Rath, the 6'3", 230-pound freshman there for the stop. I think we might have a measurement here. Another nice effort by Dean Collins. He's having somewhat of a productive afternoon. He's been the extent of the Bulldog ground attack today. Came into the day with 406 yards, 42 more.
I'm pointing at something. You, you don't know what I'm pointing at, Steve, as it's a first down. I'm looking at that cloud that's coming in over Romney Stadium. I think we could get some rain here pretty soon. Now, there's talking about snow early today, but it just was not cold enough, and that snow just stayed up in the Wasatch Mountains. Jim Sweeney feeling the chill. And now, now it is beginning to snow just a bit. I saw the cloud. I knew it. The young guy from L.A. <laughs> sees snow for the first time. <laughs> Craig Jones incomplete. That's the first time I've seen him drop one this year. It's the first time we've seen snow to try to catch him, too. So it's not easy. I think... Uh, it's a very important drive. We haven't really been hit by any kind of a snowstorm yet. We're just seeing some flurries right now. And if the Bulldogs can get it in the end zone, as you look at Telford's terrific numbers, a 14-3 lead uh, would be very difficult in these elements for Utah State to come back at. Again, great numbers, but again, it is just a 7-3 football game. Fresno State up by just four. Pass incomplete. Jones again the intended man it's third down and ten and this has been a very deliberate slow moving drive well I think you almost have to plot out there uh, the field is slippery you don't look very good when you do things because you have to be so productive and almost you know prancing out there you're not going to look pretty when you got a slick feel like this get to the 38 for the first down they just get the first down Ron Jenkins that's a great catch Darren Long was right there and popped him pretty good but despite the elements Jenkins made the grab those gloves come in handy on a very cold afternoon watch this this is not an easy grab it's a pretty good throw by Dave right over the middle Right there, the ball a little bit behind him. And that's a fabulous reception. So it's a first down at the 38. Collins tries the middle, breaks one tackle, slides by another. He's inside the 35-yard line before finally Kevin Bauman makes the tackle. Talk about Collins, he's sure-handed. He, I don't recall him fumbling all year. And again, uh, in a game that has had a lot of mistakes, when you're trying to establish a ground game, because it was absent in the first half, why not go to a guy who's not going to drop it, Dean Collins? Ten minutes, 45 seconds to play. Incomplete at the 15. Brock Smith was there. And had the pass been right there, I think Smith would have had six points. I like the call because they play fake with Dean Collins. We've been seeing Collins left and Collins right. So they faked the Collins and ran a post with Brock Smith. The Telford had a little bit too much strength behind him. Third down, six yards to go. Barry Belli getting warmed up just in case. They are near his territory. Be about a 50 yarder from there certainly I think they would try it if they don't convert here win would be in his face Telford will scramble uh -uh. and I think they just took themselves out of Bell Eye territory it's a tough choice now for Jim Sweeney whether to punt it or try to go for the long placement fourth down nine yards to go Sweeney may just go for it that's his third option of yes. the, looks like a riverboat gambler now he's going to go for it on fourth and nine so he brings his two best receivers back in the game Brock Smith and Ron Jenkins Anthony Williams will go wide to the right side both Smith and Jenkins to the left they will have single coverage and Telford dumps it off to Collins they will not get the first down and Utah State's defense has held on fourth down, you got to get it downfield, and they didn't do it. And with 9.53 left in the third, it's 7-3, Fresno State. Today's game is brought to you in part by True Value Hardware. More than just a name, it's our way of doing business. And by Allstate Insurance. 
Death up your policy, dig up your bill. Leave it to the good hands, people. Do it right now or you know you never will. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowner's rates. You might just save some money. Check through your file, look how you Sears Financial Network. Finding the right gift is easy. With these ideas inside the newest holiday circular from True Value Hardware Stores. This 45-piece 3-in-1 socket set from Master Mechanic is just $29.99. This structural foam toolbox from Contico is only $15.99. And locate studs with this electronic stud sensor from Zircon, just $13.99, at participating True Value Hardware Stores. And tell him Pat Summerall sent you. 9.53 to play. It's a first down for Utah State. They are down by just four points. No one blitzing. Pass is intercepted. Freddie Wilburn at the 48-yard line. The ninth turnover in this game. Great play by Wilbur. Pressure from Cox and Jay Wilkerson, who was coming on a delayed blitz. And give that secondary coverage, and that man, Freddie Wilburn, played at Banning High School, one of the terrific high schools in the country for football. Watch the pressure. It'll come from the outside from 54 Cox to 35 Wilkerson. There's Wilkerson. Snyder was shaken up on this play, too. And an opportunity for the Bulldogs to continue to lead 7 3, and it's been defense again. Sometimes you have to learn to take the sack. Snyder is a tough guy, but he has not learned that in his phase of the offense yet. Here's Kelly Skipper. Four yards, that's it. Second down, six. The tackle was made by defensive back Andre White. And Vic, how do the Fresno fans feel about this game? Well, the fans realize that there's a crazy, crazy amount of turnovers, but of course, when you're in Utah, you're looking for Donnie and Marie. Have you seen Donnie yet? <laughs> I haven't seen him here yet. From oh. Provo, Utah, the update. Uh, Donnie wanted to ride with us, but he couldn't come up with the correct change. We had to leave him behind. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. Back to the action. Good move. Brock Smith with a first down. A beautiful move. He's out of bounds. That plays a perfect example why you want to get a guy like Brock Smith some operating room. What head and shoulder face. Watch number two. And he's isolated in the open field. Really not a lot of room here. And boom, number 45 is lost. That's Andre White. He went right by him. And that's a great play, an individual effort by Brock Smith giving the dogs the first down. This time Smith is to the left. They'll split out their tight end. Bart Lesky to the right. Dump the pass off to Dean Collins. He's to the 35. He's near the 30-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down by about three. Make it second and seven. Dean Collins lost his shoe. You know, we've seen a bend but bro don't break defense on both parts. Nine turnovers in this game. Well, let's see now if the Bulldogs can capitalize after the Wilbur interception. That was a good screen call against the Blitz, and it was somewhat productive. Fresno State leading by four. <laughs> Telford with the first down, 23-yard line. Kevin Bauman finally made the tackle. Well, there's nobody open. Sometimes you have to take what the defense gives you, and Telford did just that. He put the ball on the hip, took it downfield as Barry Bella gets prepared in case he's called upon for a field goal. But that's a first down, and I think the dogs really need to score here. They've had so many opportunities to get some breathing room. They just need to hold on to that football. Dean Collins near the 15-yard line. No question right now, Steve, but the Bulldogs, both defensively and offensively, are dominating the line of scrimmage. They're getting off the ball here. Watch every one of them. Boom. And when Collins gets the ball, he's almost downfield, and he's a hard runner, and he's going to put the head down, and finally Darren Long, 27, gets him. But that's great work up front, and we've seen it for both the defense and the offense. And Jeff Skidmore with a great trap block. 
on the defensive tackle of Utah State. It's second and three. Collins near a first down. Again, they're working that right side over Langham, over Truchelle. We mentioned at halftime, one of the teams had to establish a ground game. And right now, it is the Bulldogs that have started to begin to move the ball on the ground. They're at the 12-yard line. It is a first down. And they have, like you said, kept that ball on the ground. And it's been Collins. The last two weeks, and now this is third, number 33 has just been terrific inside runner. Jenkins in motion. Helford will throw. Dumps it up to Collins. Fumbles the football, but they say it's an incomplete pass. They said he did not have possession of it. And it's second and ten. Dave Telford, under tremendous heat, is forced to go to Collins. Ball's thrown behind him, and that's a good call. Never had control of the football, and that was fortunate for Fresno State because that would have been recovered by Utah State. 38 tosses already. We still have seven minutes left in the third quarter. 256 yards. Jenkins can't hold on at the seven, and a flag goes down near the five-yard line. That was thrown in the middle of the line, and usually that's a holding call. Let's see what it is here. See Telford with protection. And it was thrown behind Ron Jenkins. And it's going to back up the Bulldogs, whatever the call is. Offensive interference, and that's a costly one because it's not only yardage, it's the loss of the down. So it will be second down, or third down rather, and 25 yards. Well, this is a, a tough call for Telford because he, if he wants to think in terms of a first down, he has to get down near the two-yard line. So he's basically got to throw to the end zone. He may want to move back to the middle of the field. Bell eyes on the sideline. Telford rolling out. He looks. He's in trouble. He's going to be scrambling three, gets to the 20, and is nailed there and driven back. A nice job of running, oh. but it's bell eye time. Oh, Dave Telford didn't want to be denied. Well, a lot of coaches would tell him to put his head down, but on that occasion, Dave Telford wanted to get as much as he can to try to aid and abet his field goal kicker. So they'll mark that football right at the 27. A 37-yard field goal attempt by Belli. We've seen four of his last five field goals go awry. Either be blocked or he was wide or short. This one's on the way. And it is good. From 37 yards out, Barry Belli has given Fresno State a seven-point lead at 10-3. We'll be back after you hear this. One rockin' evening at the Silver Bullet. Man, sure is loud. Oh, I just want it. Wanna dance? No, they got good lights. You can't hear me, can you? I think you're beautiful. In fact, I think you look so hot. In here, isn't it? Of course it's not so much the heat as it is the humidity. At first glance, you may not recognize the number one car in customer satisfaction. It's not BMW or Mercedes-Benz. It's Acura, from a new division of American Honda, engineered to deliver all the performance of German road cars for thousands less. Acura, number one in customer satisfaction after just one year on the road. Want a closer look? Come to Fresno Acura and see for yourself why Acura leaves the competition in the dust. That's the snow in the Wasatch Mountains that has not arrived in Romney Field yet. So at this time, the fans at Logan, Utah are dry. But for how long? <laughs> 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 
they feel a lot more comfortable in the San Joaquin Valley. <laughs> I think we all do. Oh, my, yes. Six minutes to play in his third quarter. Payne on the return. He has an opening. 40-yard line. Midfield. 46-yard line. And Utah State and their sideline is fired up. Brett Payne loves that phase of the game. He loves to return kickoff. Probably more than carrying the ball from the line of scrimmage because he has more room to operate. He's a deceptive young man, and he's very difficult in the open field. And that could be a very uplifting experience for Utah State. Let's see how their line produces here because they've been getting dominated. And Snyder has made some poor decisions of late. Last two interceptions. Nick Ruggirole making the tackle, and Vic Jacobs is down on the Fresno State sideline. Vic? A lot of people are saying to me, Vic, you've got that crazy jacket on, this long jacket. Are you wearing one of your sports jackets underneath? Yes, I am. I'm going to show it to you because it's particularly ugly today. What do you think of this? What do you think <laughs> of that? Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you very much. And you see Vic Jacobs' hair? He did not use mousse today. He just wet it, and it froze in the cold temperatures of Logan, Utah. Incomplete at the 35-yard line. That was very close. And Vic, that is the ugliest jacket I've ever seen. <laughs> that was the closest thing I've seen to stand-up comedy in a football game in a long time. <laughs> Rod Webster there with a terrific play. He read the eyes of the quarterback, Brent Snyder, and Webster nearly intercepted that one. It's third down. Aggies need eight yards. This defense gets better and better. Shelton called it the best in the PCAA, better than San Jose State. Pass is made, catch is made. Kendall Smith is near the 38-yard line. It'll be a fourth down now and a decision for Chuck Shelton. I think he's got to go for it. His fans certainly wanted to. And you have three wins in nine games, and you're looking in the face of loss number seven. You gotta go for it. His dilemma, though, even though it's a yard and a half, he's had very little of a running game. So do you throw it here on fourth and a yard and a half? That's the option that's facing the likes of Kendall Smith and Brett Snyder. Well, they don't go with the I formation. But Snyder likes to run the option. Two wide receivers to each side. And Snyder on the quarterback sneak. Finally is hauled down by Rod Webster, and Webster saves for the touchdown. Great call. Webster ran into a big guy. Remember Snyder's 6'4 and 212 pounds, and he's able to break the tackle of O'Leary, and Snyder was finally wrapped up by Rod Webster. It is a first down at the 26-yard line. A touchdown could tie this game. We have four minutes, eight seconds to play in the third quarter. 10 to 3, our score, Bulldogs. Seven men on the line. Snyder will run. Jet throw Franklin. Grabs him by an ankle and knocks him down along with Jay Wilkinson. Everybody at Romney Stadium thought Snyder was going to throw the football on the roll. He uses the pump fake. And he takes the yardage before he's finally dropped by Jethro Franklin, who had to come across the field to get the quarterback. They got the first down to the 14-yard line. You know, we talked about the fact this kid took 43 hits at Nebraska and came back. There is absolutely no quit in Brent Snyder. There's also no fear. Blitz. Catches made at the 10-yard line. Petey Maiden. He was wrapped up by Tony Harris, by Rod Webster, by Tracy Rogers. It's a gain of six, second down and four. Snyder throwing into tremendous coverage here, but Maiden made the catch despite Harris and Webster's presence. Great concentration by that tight end. Kendall Smith wide to the right side. Maiden is having a fine afternoon. They split their backs. Ray to the left. Payne to the right. Blitz is on. Touchdown! Kendall Smith.
Ron Cox delivered an incredible blow to Brent Snyder. And down is the junior quarterback. Well, what a great throw. Chuck Shelton has to be proud of his team. After the turnover and the field goal to go up 10-3, he watches his Aggies come right back down the field and get what could be an equalizing touchdown. Snyder under incredible pressure all afternoon. He's going to get hammered by Cox as he releases oh, right Cox. there. But it's right on target, and the post pattern is open for the touchdown because of the blitz. There's not enough guys back in that secondary. Snyder, as tough as nails, is going to be okay. Got to like his effort. Did you see the hit that Ron Cox put on him? That's hanging in there. They will try and tie it up here. Dean Garner. It's a 10-9 game. It is now a 10-10 game. And we have 2.43 to play in the third quarter. And we will pause and be back with more PCAA football after this. your hand. Burger King, the best food for fast times. Wait, it's the Whopper deal of a meal. One third more fries, free. All right. One third more fries, free. With a Whopper large fries and regular drink at Burger King. Ooh, I like that. Get one third more fries, free, now. Something smart has happened to the new Pacific Bell Yellow Pages. You can find anything for your house by letting our new one-page index lead you to a whole room full of choices. Now everything is easy because of you. The brand new Pacific Bell Smart Yellow Pages. It's smarter to do it by the book. You see the score. We've got another thriller on KMPH. And there is Brent Snyder, who was nailed by Ron Cox, but he's okay now. And this is Anthony Williams from the five-yard line. All down at the 24. Steve, I think we're going to have to rename the Bulldogs to the Cardiac Kids. They have been great theater this year. What games we have seen with this Fresno State football squad. Go back to Western Illinois with Belli kicking the field goal and the heartbreaking loss at UOP. The tough setback to San Jose State when they had an opportunity to win. They like the close games, don't they? Thriller last week with Fullerton State and that goal line stand. First and ten. Dumped it off to Kelly Skipper. No sir. Lost in the play. Hey, this is a fired up Aggie team. That's almost like a run. Get the ball in the flat to kill his skipper. As we look at that Utah State drive, and it was a good one. Remember that long return by Brett Payne? That really ignited this club. They were kind of sitting back on their heels, dead in the water. But that Brett Payne kickoff return really got them excited, and the offense took over from there. Long Beach State is beating San Jose State in the second quarter, 7-6. Complete. It's third down and 12. And I'm telling you, Randy, anytime you let a team you should beat in the football game long enough, they start believing in themselves and believing they can win. And the Aggies believe that right now. And I think it was all set up as Jim Swinney looks on by that Brett Payne kickoff return. Down 10-3. We told you the Bulldogs were dominating the line of scrimmage, and suddenly the momentum has changed. This is the big third down play now for Dave Telford. This is the worst defense in the PCAA, allowing 456 yards per game. We allowed a lot of yards today, but only 10 points. Telford will throw. Completes the pass, but flags down. Andre Alexander with the catch, but at the line of scrimmage, is not a good sign if you're a Bulldog fan. One of the offensive linemen went downfield. So it's third down once again. 22 yards to go. Very San Jose State, despite being down, regardless of what they do, they will meet Eastern Michigan 
in the Cal Bowl because Eastern Michigan beat Bowling Green this afternoon 38 to 18. So on December 12th at Fresno, Bulldog Stadium, it's Eastern Michigan and San Jose State. Big Ten upset, Iowa beating Ohio State. The Buckeyes with a down year, 29-27. That big was in Columbus, too. Big third and 17. The catch is made. Craig Jones is down short of the first down. And the fans are really into it now at Romney Stadium, some 10,000. Just too much to overcome for Dave Telford. He makes a great effort here, though, as he scrambled and found his tight end. Inside pressure from Hunsaker, and he had to re regroup. He finds Jones crossing over the right side. And you can see downfield Brock Smith, number two, waving his hand. And he was open. But Telford was on the run and could never see him. Oh, line drive kick, Kendall Smith, a dangerous return man. He has a nice return to midfield. Excellent field position for Utah State and a red-hot quarterback, Brent Snyder. Darrell James in the tackle, but only 30 yards in the punt into a stiff breeze by Barry Belli. Remember, the Bulldogs will get that breeze in their favor in the fourth quarter. So this is a... Well, we have a minute 14 left, so this is a crucial set here for the Aggies. They'd love to get the lead and try to protect it in that fourth quarter. Utah State has won their last three games over Utah. Either they beat Santa, won two out of the last three. Snyder in trouble. It's almost intercepted and then almost caught by Pat Newman. The harassment of Jethro Franklin, though, is the reason this ball is underthrown. 67, beating Dave Walker, beating Tim Ray, the fullback. And because of that, Snyder throws it up for grabs. It was nearly intercepted by Cox and nearly caught by Newman. But that ball never should have been thrown. Second down, 10 yards to go, and Jethro Franklin really putting the pressure on Brent Snyder again. Blitz is on. For man coverage and completed the 15 yard line. Troy Turner, the intended receiver, but Fred Wilburn with great coverage. John Turner really pressuring the quarterback, Brent Snyder. Boy, how many times is this young man going to be knocked down and how many times is he going to get back up? One thing about him, we know he doesn't have a glass chin like some of those fighters. When he gets hit, he is very sturdy. He's a tough young man. Big third down. It's just a minute to play in the third period. Ron Cox is blitzing. Jethro Franklin was there. The catch is incomplete. 48-yard line. Fine coverage from Jay Wilkerson. Your defense in the secondary is always much better when you have a pass rush. Now, they stunted and set Franklin to the outside, and Ruggeroli went inside, and that forced a bad throw to Demetrius Brown. Good coverage by Wilkerson. But again, that front wall really pressured quarterback Brent Snyder. So it's time to punt the football away. Webster is the man back. We'll let it go out of the end zone. Bulldog football at the 20-yard line. Goes in the end zone. Chris Reinhardt we were looking at before, and he was talking to the coaches upstairs. Right now, they're saying, get some points on the board right now. We're in a 10-10 tie. Telford time again. 47 seconds left in the third period. Catch is made. Ron Jenkins, first down. 35-yard line, gain of 15. Set the receivers downfield, clear an area, and have one of them come back underneath. And that was the case for Ron Jenkins. Perfectly executed, seven catches again. Jenkins having another big game. 
But he had 16 grabs at UOP. That's incredible. You can barely see that snow creeping over Romney Field. Temperatures down inside the 40s now. And Telford back to throw. Kelly Skipper. Nice move. Has the first down at the 45-yard line. Skipper has nine catches now in the game. That is a career high. And on the season, 32. Last year, as the starter at halfback, he had under 10. Down to six seconds now. Bulldogs are throwing into almost blizzard conditions with a very strong wind in their face and snow coming in their face, too. And that's the end of the third period as Telford jogs to the sideline. We will play the final 15 minutes of PCAA football with the score tied at 10. Your Central Valley Toyota dealers are celebrating. We're celebrating Toyota's first 30 years in America. And that means big savings to you on every new Toyota car and truck. You can save hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Save now on every new Toyota car, truck, and van in stock. Come join the party <laughs> with your Central Valley Toyota dealer. That's 30 years. You've probably heard that Coors isn't pasteurized. Well, it's true. It's also true that Coors is the only major brewer who won't pasteurize any of their beer. The reason? It's taste. See, when you pasteurize something, you heat it. And heating hurts the taste of beer. So Coors purifies without heat. That helps make Coors a little less heavy, never bitter, but with all the spirit of a great beer. So when you want a beer, it's just plain better. Coors is the one. We begin the fourth quarter. Tie football game, Fresno State and Utah State. And Dave Telford has the Bulldogs with a first down at the 45-yard line. He reads the defense, starts out of the shotgun, will stay there now. And the blitz is on. Telford in trouble. Down he goes. I'll tell you, that defense is doing a job. So is Gary Holsey. A left tackle, number 74. You know, he's been criticized here. He's not a freshman. He's a senior, and he has a body of an All-American. He was hammered around in there, and he was able to step up and finally get the quarterback, Telford. But Halsey is a senior. They feel uh, that he should be able to go bear hunting with a toothpick, that he's got that kind of body. But so far, he's not lived up to expectations, but he's come up big today. One of a long line of outstanding defensive linemen that was set by the brother combination of Phil and Merlin Olsen. Incomplete flag is down. Intended for Ron Jenkins, who is slow in getting up near the 40-yard line. Vic Jacobs is down on the sideline. Vic, do you have your gloves on? You know, I don't have my gloves. I forgot my gloves at home. But, you know, the snow front is coming in over the Wasatch Mountains. A lot of the Bulldog players have never seen snow. In fact, Ron Sims, the fullback, just said to me, Vic, I've never seen snow before. So it's going to be a wild fourth quarter. Well, it's coming out of the Wasatch Mountains. <laughs> it's the Wasatch Mountains. You know, it's crazy about this, Steve. we got a, we got a, a portion where it's sunny, a patch of sunlight. But right behind that patch of sunlight is the ugliest clouds I've ever seen, and they are packed with snow. I tell you, the people in Logan love it. They just put on their skis and take a vacation. Personal foul against the Bulldogs. There's that nice the sunshine. The sky. And as you move further to the west, it gets ugly. <laughs> That's nice. Second down, 27 yards to go for Fresno State. Fumble. Tough of the time. He better scramble. Completes the pass to Kelly Skipper. His tenth catch of the game. He's out of bounds. It'll be third down in a bundle. Great effort by Telford, keeping his composure after he fumbled the ball. 
And he went to a safety valve and Kelly Skipper who's become his favorite target under these conditions. That's the scoring. Bunched in the second and third periods. But through the first three quarters, we've seen a lot of yardage. The only problem, nine turnovers. Tight end Craig Jones splits out left side. He's in the slot. The backs will both go out and release. And Telford has plenty of time. He wants to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for Craig Jones. Aggie fans, huddle up. The temperatures continue to drop in the 30s now. Boy, it's tough in these conditions to see Telford. For a moment, I thought maybe he was going to hold that hand. If you get hit, it stings on a day like today. Bella should get a good kickoff, though, here because he's got the wind at his back. He does, but it's a low-line drive kick, and Kendall Smith falls down at the 21-yard line. Well, I hope he is not hurt. He has had a spectacular year so far, but he seems to have landed on his right arm. And with 13.46 to play in the game now, it's a tie game. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach, the mountains, or a drive in the country in the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can be. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. Hi, can you show me an Epson printer for my business? During Epson's Breakthrough 87, I can show you printers with higher power, printers that lead the market in value, printers with 9-pin speed and simplicity, printers with 24-pin quality and versatility, printers with advanced Epson technology, printers with traditional Epson reliability. I'll take the Epson. They're all Epson. I'll take them all. Your business must be terrific. How's yours? Terrific! Online Computers Plus in Fresno Call 432-4324. Also in Modesto, Stockton, and Visalia. Our score is tied at 10, and Brent Snyder, the quarterback. Chuck Shelton, the coach, said he went out and got himself a quarterback and a bundle of them in the offseason, but he likes this man best. And Snyder has been tough today. He's going down the middle. He has his man Payne at the 45 at the first down. Inside of 14 minutes. He had him last year during spring ball, Brent. As Brett Payne goes off to the sideline. But Brent Snyder caught up so quickly in spring football that he audibilizes like 40 to 60 percent time. And knowing the program only a half a year, that's outstanding. He's checking off now. Demetrius Brown is knocked down. Swarming red wave off the left side. Wilkerson. Franklin, Ruggeroli, they're all there. They're able to read when this team goes into the eye formation that it's going to go into the tailback's hands. I just think that Chuck Shelton needs to use play action out of the eye formation and throw the football. Inside of 13 minutes left in the ball game. The snow falling here in Logan. They need to get to the 44-yard line in Fresno State Territory for the first down. Blitzen. Incomplete. Maiden was the intended receiver. And Snyder has to. I think he needs a flak game. jacket. You know how those quarterbacks nowadays wear the flak jacket? It was Ron Cox again, 54, that is after that target, and he comes to destroy him. And I believe that was Wilkerson from the other side. It, it's a tough job being the QB. You know, you always see the quarterback on the commercials. They get all the notoriety. But hey, what about the pounding they take? It's always a, a lot of fun. At least it's supposed to be, but not on this occasion. Brett Snyder is taking a real beating. He has a big third and 12 here. 12.40 to play. Tied at 10. He's going deep for Kendall Smith. Incomplete, but a flag is down. 
Well, it was Bowens working one-on-one -on -one with Kendall Smith, and it's interference on the offensive player. So, fourth down. Kendall Smith must have pushed off on Bowens. And Shelton can't believe it again. A little bit upset. Chuck Shelton came to Logan by way of Drake, where they lost their program. Highly thought of coach. And they uh, are very confident in Logan that he'll bring them back to winning ways. He was the Missouri Valley Coach of the Year two years in the early 80s. And it's punting time. So Louis Aguiar comes back out there, and Shelton remains red hot. His team is tied. The Fresno State. <laughs> I always love the faces of the referees. They almost always act like they are not even listening. Another line drive kick. Anthony Williams will have the return from the 20. Reverses his field. He's in trouble now. And down he goes. What an effort by Troy Turner getting down there at specialty teams. 12-23 remaining in this ball game. Fresno State 10 and Utah State 10. fastest-growing copier company by making microwaves. Mita, or we make our great copiers. Fresno State using thermal gloves. And I would imagine for a lot of guys in the San Joaquin Valley, they never had to use thermal gloves before. Now they're trying it here. It's Fresno State's possession, and it's Kelly Skipper trying the middle for a short gain. The 25 yard line, a gain of three. It will be second down and seven. Very rarely see Kelly Skipper carry the ball anymore. It's almost a Dean Collins oriented ground game. Skipper's more utilized in the passing attack. the catch. Ron Jenkins. Oh, no, way. he's called it incomplete. Well, they, you know, the funny thing about that, the side judge comes over quickly, whistling that it was complete, and then the referee comes over and says incomplete. Ball was thrown a little low by Dave Telford, and Jenkins couldn't quite hold on. Another big third down. You can see he's already over 50 pops. <laughs> Another 311 yards. Kelly Skipper, near a first down, we may have a measurement here. This is vital, too, at this stage of the game. 11 and a half minutes left. That little guy with 11 catches today. Well, the pressure is coming from the left, from Halsey. We go back over the middle to Kelly Skipper. We have a measurement in progress as the tackle is made by Drew McCantless, the nose guard. I don't know that, you know, Jim Sweeney's a gambler, but if it's fourth down from there, this stage of the game with 11 and a half minutes, I don't know that he would go for it. Oh, this is close. Got about three inches to go. Now, what do you do here? He's going to punt. With the wind to your back and the defense like Fresno State has. And they will line up very quickly. To disallow Utah State to get set. Smith is back at his 25-yard line. 
Referees have finally set the ball. And it's back to Hyland. And Belli must get rid of it quickly. He gets a good one off, and he is hit and hit hard. And here comes Kendall Smith. Smith is down at the 30-yard line, but Belli may have been rough. Roughing the kicker. What an incredible effort by Barry Bella. You talk about opponent. him as a kicker. Forget the kick. What a reception going up the ladder. You know, they, they talked about Ray Guy as a punter because he was such a great athlete. Well, Belli made a great athletic play there. And then he was roughed up by Tony Brown. And that gives the, the Bulldogs a, a much-needed first down. They Watch him go up. That's an incredible play by Belli under these conditions. And then he got the kickoff unintended to boot. He is something else. 11 minutes, 18 seconds left in the ball game, And Belli has given him an, another chance for breathing room. It's first down. It's a 15-yard infraction. Chuck Shelton can't believe that. He, he's saying, hey, it's running into the kicker. There was no intentions involved there. He better be careful. He'll pick up another play. And I think he did. I think they're going to march off another 15 yards on the coach. So that becomes a 30-yard penalty. So Chuck Shelton's got absolutely berserk on that. Huge play. Instead of fourth down and the punt, to the 30-yard line, it would have been first down for Utah State. All of a sudden, 30 yards gained by Fresno State and a first down. And you can hear the boos. And Telford is looking over the middle of Craig Jones. Eight-yard gain. Vic Jacobs is down on the sideline near Barry Belli. I just spoke with Barry. I said what everyone would ask him. Barry, how'd you do that? He said, Vic, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know how he did it, but he did it. That's what you got to say. Is that modesty or what? Knowing what to do in the right situations make you a champion. And just Belli reacted positively. Second and one. They're going to throw it again. It's complete for a first down. 21-yard line. Brock Smith. Good pattern and a great throw. A timing pattern, and Telford had that one on target. Telford is on course for a 400-yard effort. It's a pretty throw. Got both feet in. That would have been good in the pro game, too. 10-34 left in the ball game. 10-10 tie here in Logan, Utah. Kelly Skipper on the sweep. Two shell out in front of him. Great defensive play by Utah State. The strong safety came up quickly. Darren Long. Second team All-PC AA a year ago. It is second down and 10. And Shelton is still talking to the referee. He isn't inviting him out to dinner either. Helfer fumbles the football. Utah State has it at the 20-yard line. They're saying no. His arm was going forward. It's an incomplete pass. And does Fresno State get a break here? Now Chuck Shelton's absolutely going to go crazy. <laughs> Look at Travis Clark. He thought it was a fumble. Chuck Shelton can't believe it. He feels like he's getting homered at home. Well, oh, it's a borderline call. Luke. I thought it was a fumble. Well, let's see it again. Telford. He fumbled I, the it's football. a fumble. You're right. Darren Long hit him on the blitz. That should have been a fumble. That's a bad call. Wow. Two critical plays one on the punt now one on the fumble and dean collins is to the 15 yard line and it is fourth down belli will come on try for the field goal it'll be of the 32 33 yard variety from straight on 
Well, Collins ran back into the middle of the field basically to set up the field goal and nearly broke that for a touchdown. On straight away, Jenkins to hold, 32 yards out. Utah State fired up. But Belli is true. And Fresno State stretches their lead to 10. 13 to 3 with 8.59 to play. And Logan, Utah is mad. Saturday, Eastwood rides. Let Red go. He's the legendary man with no name. And he's giving a ruthless killer two options. Alive or dead, it's your choice. But first, he has to deal with Lee Van Cleef. When two enters go after the same prey, they usually end up shooting each other in the back, and we don't want to shoot each other in the back. For a few dollars more. We bear you as a die. Saturday night at 8 on 26 KMPA. On the next Hardcastle and McCormick, an ex-con becomes a hot new comedian. How can you expect a guy named Milton to have a sense of justice? What is funny about that? Any fry is going national. But just when his career is about to take off. I'm writing this off as a suicide. There was no way Denny Fry committed suicide. There's a lot of funny business on Hardcastle and McCormick. Saturday night at 10 on 26 KMPH. Belli, a uh, flag is thrown on Barry Belli for illegal procedure because he kicked off before the referee allowed him to do so. So Barry Belli will kick off again. Maybe that was a make good. Let's see. But this game has come down to this play. Dave Telford's incomplete pass that was actually a fumble. His arm was not going forward. The fumble occurs. The officials rule incomplete pass. Belli punches through a 32-yard field goal, and it's a 10-point Fresno State lead. Inconclusive evidence from that replay. <laughs> it's 13-10 in favor 10. of the Bulldogs. So they're protecting that field goal advantage by Barry Belli. 13-10, excuse me. Brett Payne. down after an excellent return to the 41-yard line. Second time of this game, Brett Payne has given the Aggies an emotional lift right after you had the feeling that Fresno State was going to take control. But Brett Payne, this is a 38-yard return. If you give him room to operate, he's got great vision to see the field. And in the open field, he runs right by Blair Holloway and into Tony Harris's arms, but not until he makes a big play for the Aggies. Blitz is on. Schneider is thrown down. A loss of 10 on the play. Wilkerson was blitzing. And he's the man who made the play. Give credit to, to the secondary. Schneider had no targets to throw to. And then that pocket broke down. Jethro Franklin and Jay Wilkerson in tandem get to Schneider. But you see, there's some time, so that secondary did its job. And so did Wilkerson and Franklin. Wilkerson comes at you like a biting sow. I'm telling you, he is really a fighter out there at inside linebacker. Second down, 20. Ron Cox is blitzing this time. Pass is thrown. Kendall Smith with the catch for a first down. 40-yard line. Again, Snyder under pressure. And slow in getting up. I'll tell you, that's a big league receiver in Kendall Smith. 28 yards on that catch. He's caught their touchdown earlier in the game. And Jethro Franklin again unloads on Snyder. But he again put it in a place where it was a catchable ball. And Smith did a very good job reacting to the ball while the defenders never saw it. Great game for Kendall Smith. He had 10 catches last week. He has seven more today. 59 on the season. Oh, 
Snyder in trouble again. He's going for the home run. Pat Newman makes the catch. Touchdown! A flag is down, though, backfield. And Snyder is reacting like it's against Utah State. And it would wipe out a touchdown. That would be historical for Pat Newman. It does. That would have been the eighth consecutive game. Newman would have had a touchdown. But that's the second TD call back against the Aggies today. And again, Snyder with a perfect throw. We didn't see the hold or the illegal shift. But this is a marvelous throw and a better grab. Newman comes up big. That's a marvelous effort. I'll tell you what, though. Only for just a short while did Brent Snyder show his disappointment. Then he got right back up. Patted his fellow teammates on the back saying, hey, got to get it this time. First down, 20 yards to go. Well, he's the kind of kid that won't quit. You beat up on a guy like that, he's just going to get tougher as the game goes on. They want the, the Bulldog players to back off the sideline. They were getting a little bit close to the field. Why not? Everybody's getting involved in the game right now. And officials are trying to keep the players away from the field. It's a 13-10 ball game. Fresno State has the lead. Barry Belli's 32-yard field goal, the difference. Richard Rollins will leave the game. Kendall Smith is wide to the right side. Newman is in the slot. Snyder on first down needs 20. Blitz is on. Wilkerson may, makes the catch, and he's down for a 15-yard gain. Snyder's ability to read that blitz and find the opening with the linebackers coming to get it to his tight end. PD made... And Maiden got to that open area in a hurry and he gets 16 yards. Jim Sweeney is perplexed right now. And Brent Snyder is really proving to be a fine leader. Second down and four. five-yard line to the two-yard line. It's first and goal. Rod Webster making a touchdown-saving tackle. Well, last week against Fullerton State, Fresno State had this situation. A goal line stand that won the football game. A victory over Fullerton State. And now it is time for that defense to rise to the occasion again. Quick hitter and Brett Payne Gets right through the hole in a hurry. With that vision, cuts it upfield, and if it wasn't for Webster, Utah State would have the lead. He'll mark the football. I think that's Jethro Franklin shaking up. Outside the two-yard line. Well, he was the big man in that goal line stand last week. McCutcheon is in. Craig Tade is in. John Turner is in. First and goal inside the three. Double tight end. Snyder to throw. In trouble. Touchdown. Needy Maiden. It comes at the 6-11 mark of this ball game. Patience is a virtue. And Brent Snyder waited as long as he could and finally found Maiden. Now the point after. It's 16-13. It's now 17-13. And Utah State has their first lead of the game. And we will pause and be back with the final six minutes and 11 seconds. But we will stay here as Fresno State huddling up quickly on the sideline with their offense. You know, it's a gut check time. with 6-11 left. You're down 17-13. It's never easy to win on the road. It's a difficult task, and it won't be easy in the final 6-11. It'll be a big time for Dave Telford. Let's go down and get a, a report from Vic Jacobs on Jethro Franklin. 
Okay, you saw Jethro Franklin limping off to the sideline. He twisted his right ankle. It's not serious. I think he'll be back in the next series. You're not going to take Jethro Franklin out with a mere twisted ankle. Well, Vic, that's all well and good, but the Bulldogs have to start to score some points because they're at the wrong end of the 17-13 score right now. They have to get the offense going. And what makes it doubly tough now, you know the Utah State Aggies are really going to be pumped up on the defensive side of the ball. Kelly Skipper is in the game for the return. That does not mean that Brock Smith is injured. I think they like the way Skipper's been running on this turf. Yeah, but Smith's one of the best in the country at football returns. Williams from the six. Looks for the wedge. Finds it momentarily as a nice return to the 29-yard line. He made the difference in the game thus far. It is 17-13, Utah State with a four-point edge. That drive, 59 yards. Final three yards to Mr. Maiden. Were you surprised they threw on first and goal from the three? Well, with a double tight end lineup, the way they throw the football, we've seen almost 100 passes in this game. Plenty of time, six minutes. Oh, incomplete. Dean Collins, second down and 10. We are right at six minutes left in the game. of a big play on this one for Jim Sweeney's team and because of that they're trailing remember the big plays they had at Pacific they have not had that today at Utah State blitz is on Dean Collins screen set up short of the first down by a good six yards Tony Brown on the stop well, it's a game of third down. And here's a big one for the Bulldogs. Five and a half minutes left. They don't want to relinquish the ball. So Telford has to come up with five yards. This is a crucial play. Chuck Shelton said yesterday, defensively, he was scared to death of this football team. But they are so explosive that they have been their own worst enemy. And now the Utah State defense feels they too can win. And they knock down the pass. It's fourth down. Steve Davis. Five minutes, 17 seconds left in the game. 17-13. Utah State leads. Smith at the 22. Nice return. 46 yard line. Daryl James finally made the tackle after the 43 yard punt. Kendall Smith had a 77 yarder for a touchdown against UNLV, and you can see why. Goes right by Daryl Martin. That's a big play. This Utah State team is running on a lot of emotion right now. Snyder with a first down at the 46-yard line. Single coverage on Turner and Newman. Single coverage as well on Kendall Smith, and Snyder wants to go deep, and he's going deep for Kendall Smith. It's incomplete. Once again, Fred Wilburn with great single coverage on Kendall Smith. What a chore that is. Try to wrap up a, a receiver like a Kendall Smith. Coming in, he was the sixth best receiver in Aggie history. You can see Chuck Shelton saying, hey, give me one call. Just give me one crucial call down the stretch. <laughs> his, his team has been fighting and fighting, and he's been fighting right along with them. Try and pull the upset this afternoon. But here at Romney Field, it is never easy to win. And Snyder with the pass, broken up at midfield. Craig Bowens with the coverage. Here's number seven, Bowens on the coverage. Well, here's 
a third down situation that the Bulldogs desperately need to hold here. Their defense needs to respond and get the ball back for the offense with less than five minutes left. Bowens with a nice play there. Jethro Franklin is indeed in that front wall trying to get to Snyder. Number 67 is back in. Third down and 10. Franklin on the left side of the defensive line. Wilkerson blitz and pass thrown to Newman. He makes the catch and he's knocked down at the 35-yard line, but it's a first down for Utah State. That kid has got unbelievable hands. Again, the ball's thrown behind him. And again, Pat Newman with a remarkable catch. And Bones with the right arm just thrown down, but Newman and Kendall Smith are, are big-time targets. Newman off to the right side now. Smith will lead the game. Turner is on. Richard Rollins is on. And Schneider will throw again. The blitz is on. A flag is down. It's incomplete. Tell you, uh, Schneider showing so much moxie out there. Chuck Shelton was talking about him yesterday, number 12, and here will be a penalty against Utah State. But he said, if he gets hurt, you'll see me leave the stadium. Yeah, and I can see why. Well, he's the kind of kid that doesn't seem to get hurt. It's a hold against the offensive team of Utah State. He said this is the only team he has ever coached that has improved every game. You know, he also said that he enjoys this team more than any team that he's ever coached. And he's been in the... Uh, coaching fraternity for some 27 years. He really loves this group, and Sweeney likes his kids, too. But right now, he'd like his kids to come up with something big defensively. It'll be a first and 20 after the hold. They decided to take the yardage. They have to try to force Utah State to make a mistake here. Four minutes, 17 seconds left. Utah State leads by four, 17-13. Audible. Bulldogs have come up with five turnovers in the game. They need one now. Wilkerson blitzing. Snyder eludes it. Cox is nailing Snyder. And there's the interception. Sometimes you have to learn to know when to fold them. Keith McCoy got the interception, but it was Ron Cox. We talked about the defense as McCoy will get patted back on the back now for the interception. But Ron Cox, Wilkerson forces him out of the pocket. Watch 54 come over and deliver the delivery sack. And then McCoy stepping in front of the target, Turner, for the interception. And now the Bulldogs at least have a chance to win the game. 38-yard line with 4.10 to play. Telford has the pass knocked down. I tell you, this Aggie defense is playing their best game of the year. Todd Thornton, who had a fumble recovery in the first quarter, is playing like a man possessed, number 93. He goes 6-3, only 226 pounds. But so many of these young men come back to this football team a little leaner a little meaner and a little older. That's because Church of the Latter-day Saints, they go off on missions all around the world and come back 22, 23 years old and ready to play football. Telford down the middle. The pass is caught. First down, Ron Jenkins inside Utah State Territory 42-yard line. Great catch. Cold afternoon, late in the day. More snow on its way. A necessary catch to get the first down and that's a nice grab there's not much you can say that's great athletic ability and that it's something that fresno state desperately needed they needed a something to get them back in gear offensively they've been out of sync in the fourth quarter and perhaps ron jenkins as you see mike with come come off the field he'll be okay perhaps that catch by jenkins will get that offense back uh, on track big play by jenkins for the first down we are right at 3.58 left in the game. Utah State leading 17-13. Steve Fiziok along with Randy Rosenblum this afternoon. On the draw. 
Kelly Skipper slides to the 35-yard line, a gain of seven, second down and three. Great call. Everybody's thinking pass. Got plenty of time. Still three and a half minutes left. Why not give Skipper a chance on the ground? And keep that defense honest. Hey, Vic Jacobs, you're down on the sideline. How is Mike Withicum? He's okay. I was his shoulder, but he's right back in there. He's tough. Willicum wants to be part of this Fresno State opportunity for a win. Skipper trying the right side, will not get the first down. It's third down and two. You know, Gary Halsey has been criticized all year, number 74, and he's playing his final home game here in Logan today, and he was holding on, and he has played a terrific game for this team from Logan, Utah, the Utah State Aggies. Well, Sheldon said they have a chance to win the game, but they have to play awfully well. Right now, they're doing that. There's Holsey. He's had a fabulous effort. 74. Wasn't that Merlin Olsen's number? You bet. Dean Collins for the first down and more. Inside the 25-yard line. Trap play and a trapped Utah State. Well, the Aggies are thinking pass. A little quick hitter there. Skidmore with a great block, and number 33 is coming right at you. Darren Long locking him up, but it's downfield and a big first down. Two minutes, 37 seconds left in the ball game. 17-13. Telford dumps it off Skipper. To the 20, to the 15, to the 10. First and goal, but a flag is down. They're going to call Jeff Truchel, number 71, for an illegal block. So the Bulldogs are going to have to overcome that penalty bugaboo again. Wipe out that last catch, but it was a marvelous effort by Skipper. Remember, Barry Belli is, for all intents and purposes, out of the game. It's a four-point game, so the Bulldogs, with 2.23 left, need the touchdown to win. Jim Sweeney looking for his 76th victory as you take a look at the hold. He said Chuck Shelton saying man for man, Fresno State is a better football team. But we're playing them at home, and it's a team we have an opportunity to play with, play well against, and perhaps pick up a victory. Dave Telford down the middle, incomplete. Second down, 20 yards to go. He had him open. Ron Jenkins was open. He just overthrew him. Two minutes and six seconds left. It's cold, and it's time for a big play at second and 20. You know that Utah State's going to be coming with a furious rush. Maybe the screen play will be called again. Utah State in zone coverage. Down the middle. Over the head of Ron Jenkins, who had a step on the defensive back, Tony Brown. So it's third down and 20. Well, they went for all of it rather than a chunk. Philosophy, try to win the game on one big play. They have two plays left to them. They'd obviously go for it on fourth down. But on third and 20, they really want to convert here and take some of the pressure off of Dave Telford. get to the 12-yard line for the first down. Secondary is playing very deep. No blitz. Help for the scramble. Incomplete. He had Anthony Williams alone and could not find him. It's fourth down, 20. Well, whatever they think is going to work, we'll see the timeout here, I'm sure. And have to come over to the sideline and try to figure out from upstairs what play they feel can beat the Aggie defense. From the 32 yard line, they must get to the 12 for the first down. And the Aggie fans are on their feet as Jim Sweeney talks with his coach, or his uh, offensive coordinator, Rich Olson, and his quarterback, Dave Telford. And the Aggie fans are smelling a victory. It's fourth and 20 at the 32. One minute, 53 seconds left in the game. And Utah State leading 17-13. Oh, 
Well, Dave Telford has thrown it a lot today. Close to 60 times. But he's going to have to put it up one more time, and he's going to have to be accurate. I'd have to believe they'll put him in a shotgun and perhaps roll him out of the pocket to buy some extra time. Andre Alexander's uh, type of target he may look for, needing 20 yards. Obviously, Ron Jenkins and Brock Smith have been his favorite wideouts all year. But Alexander, see if he comes in the game. They need 20 yards. They need a big play. The only time that Fresno State has won in Logan was two years ago, 38 to 19. They are one and five here at Romney Field. Alexander has been inserted. You can see that passing yardage is almost identical. But they need a big one here. The 361 means nothing. Fourth and 20. Everybody split out. The blitz is on from the safety position. Telford is in trouble. Down he goes. Utah State takes over with a minute 47 left. And both teams with all their timeouts left. Brian Hunsaker, number 99, is the man. Had Telford been able to elude him, he would have had time to throw. But Brian no was State, being excuse me, with two timeouts left. See, had Telford been able to turn there, he could have held up and looked for a target. But Hunsaker made the big play. And he deserves the congratulations along the sideline. Final home game of the year, despite a, some tough calls against his team in the fourth quarter, is Utah State Aggies. Chuck Shelton's team is really hung tough. You've got to give him credit. And there's the man of the hour. Touchdown pass to Petey Maiden has given Utah State the lead. 147. The quarterback sneak Snyder it goes down at the 41 yard line. A gain of maybe three. Second down and seven. Time on his call with 141 left. They it's need just possible. one first down. Still possible for the Bulldogs. You know, hindsight's 20-20. You really have to take the timeout when you're in a fourth and 20 situation. But had they not taken that timeout, just run the fourth and 20 play, they would have had all their timeouts remaining. But uh, that's guesswork at this point. Right now, this is a, a Utah State football team that has really played a great fourth quarter, and they are to be congratulated. If you're Fresno State, you got to tackle for the football. you got to try to create an opportunity. And you see Dave Telford is still talking to himself. Had a pretty good game, Dave. If just to come up a little bit short, a little bit a little unlucky. But Snyder has done him one better. This team is great theater, this uh, Fresno State football team. And we like cliffhangers. We've seen them all year long. <laughs> yes, we have. Second down, seven. All at the 41-yard line. Need to get to the 48 for a first down. Nothing. Timeout called. They're letting it run now. And they will wait and save that timeout. It's third down and six. We may see Snyder go to the air. We also may see him take a delay of game. Utilize all that clock. I think they want that first down. They do not want to give that ball back to Fresno State. Clock showing nine seconds. Petey made in the tight end left. He's made some big catches in the game. Quarterback sneak. Does not get the first down. And now Fresno State calls the timeout. One minute left exactly. So they still have a chance. But it won't be easy. They still need a touchdown. The one thing that will aid them if they can get first downs and stop the clock for the moment to move those chains. Do you remember that game with San Jose State? An opportunity to win that one. And they march down the field only to be denied on the sack by San Jose State. I also remember UOP and they went after the punter and called for roughing. And I think they're going to have to try to block the punt here too. Mike said nine or ten guys. Stop Aggie off. Sweeney, they still think they can win. Defense came up big there. That's 
it's a gallant stand to get the ball back. And Anthony Williams standing at his 20-yard line. Snow hanging in the box of those Wasatch Mountains. They're going for the return. And Anthony Williams taking it at the 22. Looking for the wall right. Gets a little help. And the flag goes down, and there's the clip. And Anthony Williams' return will be brought back again. Another mistake. You almost get the feeling there's an automatic penalty to be thrown whenever we see a return. And now it's going to be almost insurmountable the odds they're going to have to overcome because they're really going to be backed up after the clip. Forty-four seconds left in this ball game. It was Blair Holloway. Yep, that was a good call. And you wonder well, how you can even. I mean, it was an obvious clip. Well, they have to go 87 yards when they have 44 seconds of no timeout. <laughs> That's not an easy assignment. That's just reality. And so it comes down to this. Telford. Incomplete. He was really hit from the blind side. Thornton again, 93. They're all teeing off now. There's obviously no respect for a running game. They're all coming after the quarterback. So 93 is coming from his linebacking position, trying to hurry Telford. And uh, Dave took quite a hit there. Top Thornton, Jr. from Sandy, Utah. 37 seconds left. Utah State leading by four. Catch is made, out of bounds, Craig Jones, first down at the 34-yard line. 31 seconds left in the ball game. One of those areas where you call two plays, three plays in the huddle. Well, I think that's the way to do it. You want a, a deep pattern headed toward the sideline. That got him 21 yards. Another play like that, and at least they'll have the ability to throw to the end zone. And the Aggie fans are on their feet. Lauding their defense. Incomplete at midfield. Kind of surprising they go over the middle where they can't really stop the clock except for the movement of the chains. I think you got to look for that play back to Jones again. There's only 26 seconds left to at least give them a shot at throwing it up for grabs and getting it to the end zone. 26 seconds remaining. 17-13 Utah State. Crowd of 8,281 watching at Romney Stadium. Telford splits them out. Here comes the safety blitz. It is picked up. Pass is caught. 50-yard line. Down goes the receiver. Now the clock will stop for the moment, but they have to rush it to the line of scrimmage and throw it quickly out of bounds. There's only 18 seconds left. Telford yelling out the play. There goes the clock. Out of bounds, Brock Smith after a four-yard gain. 13 seconds remaining. Well, Steve, they've done what they've had to do. They've at least put themselves in a position where Telford can go back and throw for the end zone. You know, that's the problem. You remember that clipping call? It didn't seem like a lot at the time. You felt that the Bulldogs were out of the game anyway, but it made it so difficult for them to come so far. But at least now with those big plays, one to Jenkins and one to Jones, they have a chance, and that's all you can ask in a situation like this. They have the nickel defense in, and the secondary is playing well off the line. Andre Alexander is in. Telford drops back to throw. Clock winding down inside of 10 seconds left in the game. Telford going for the home run. It's incomplete. Five seconds remaining. Seventeen thirteen Utah State. 
Well, Dave, you know what the play is going to be. Same play. Wind up and throw it to the end zone. But for Jim Sweeney, he's 0 for the year on the road. Unless he can click with a miracle play, and he knows it. He's got the one game next week at Las Cruces against New Mexico State. At Washington State. At UCLA. At Pacific. Here at Romney. Five seconds left. Telford again going for the home run. It's in the end zone and intercepted. And the ball game is over and Utah State has won their final home game of 1987. 17-13, the upset over Fresno State. That was a great throw nonetheless. As it was intercepted by Greg Haynes and nearly caught by Anthony Williams. You got to credit Telford there. He did a fabulous job even though they lost. He nearly pulled off the impossible. A marvelous throw in the clutch. And for Chuck Shelton, his guys, they just, well, they hung on and they, they dug out a very tough victory. This was a great football game. The final score, Utah State 17, Fresno State 13. Utah State defeating the Fresno State Bulldogs 17-13. A tough loss for Fresno State. But Chuck Shelton's crew really inspired for their final home game of 1987. And Vic Jacobs is down on the field with Coach Jim Sweeney. Coach, it seems when your team gets on the road, it's always difficult to notch a victory. Why was it so tough here today? I think we'd have had a hard time with this team in Fresno. Probably our crowd.